Hello and welcome to Flix and Chill with me, Luke. Today I have a very special guest. She's someone I know through Sif Pop. She is probably, not even probably, she is the number one Beyonce fan I know. <laughs> and she has a lot of takes about a lot of stuff, so um, I cannot wait to speak to her properly. Chantal is here, here with me, so Chantal, please introduce yourself and tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, like you said, I'm Chantal. I am uh, from Illinois, um, but not from... Um, not from like Chicago or anything, small town, mm -hmm. um, um, in my thirties, I work from home, uh, love movies, like he said, mm -hmm. Beyonce fan through yes. and through, but I will tell you this really quickly, uh, at the beginning, <laughs> I wasn't that much of a Beyonce fan when she first came out. I was that kind of person where it's like, um, how can we, um, how can we miss you if you don't leave? <laughs> she was just like everywhere. And yeah. it was just like, she disappeared. And then it was just like. She came back and I was just like in all this woman. So yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> she just won me over through and through. I'm in I'm in all this woman. So mm -hmm. definitely big Beyonce fan. Um, I'm a gamer. I love my games. I finally just like recently, I'm like a big kid. So I just I love my cartoons, mm -hmm. love my games. <laughs> and I'm pretty much like a homebody. I'm like, I'm kind of mm -hmm. like a, I guess you could say like an introvert, extrovert, where it's like I'm kind of quiet around you, but then when I start to get to know you, I'm mm -hmm. just like this big ball of fun when you get to know me. And sometimes I can be a little, <laughs> I can be a little annoying, <laughs> but I mean, that's like the best part. Like yes. you can't, you can't help but be around me. I'm like, I am annoying. I can be annoying. I know I can be, but you're definitely I'm a lot of fun when you get to know me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I would definitely, look, I don't really know you, know you. Like I only, right. I've been following you on X or Twitter for about right. two, three years now. So I, you know, I got to know you as a person who's got a lot of takes and a lot of opinions. <laughs> and retweets and retweets a lot so i'm like oh my god like you know like my feet is most of the time it's just you you just retweeting stuff or liking <laughs> stuff and i'm like well but see this is already my first kind of thing like i didn't actually know yeah. you were a gamer like i knew beyonce fan i know yeah. movies i know like anim animation like you know animating movies that's your jam i go i knew mm -hmm. that but i didn't know you're a gamer what so what kind of yeah. games are you into um, I, I've gotten more into like, um, I don't know what it is about these games, but I always like the games where you can make your own choices mm -hmm. where it's like, make your own choice and you choose this path and it's like, you go this way. And it's like, um, so my two favorite ones of those would have to be like the walking dead definitive series, like uh, yeah. the four seasons. Like I like instantly, I started playing that on my, on my phone first. <laughs> And then I went from Steam on my computer, and then I eventually, um, I finally got a PS5. I'm like, I love that thing. It's my favorite thing in the world. And it's like, I like replayed it on there. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with it. And then like my other favorite one that I love is Detroit. Oh, okay. Um, that was my other favorite one. That's, it's so much fun. Like, I think I probably played that one maybe like two or three times over because it's like so many possibilities that you can unlock. Yeah. And then, um. And then recently, my favorite one so far has been uh, Spider-Man 2. I've, oh, I how is it. that? Love, love, love it. It is so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, I literally, um, I had to replay <laughs> Spider-Man, of course, Miles Morales, like, last year. And I'm, like, literally at the end. <laughs> and I'm, like, I don't want to finish it because I'm, like, so close to, like, yeah. the main story. But it's, like, it's so amazing. It's just, like, the... It's just it feels really cinematic, even yeah. though it's a video game. It's it, and sometimes it like blows my mom's mind. Sometimes when I'm like playing it and she like comes in and she like sees it and she's like, sometimes she's like, I gotta remember that these are not movies, mm -hmm. like <laughs> these are actual games because yeah, you know, from like growing up, it's like seeing games from like eight picks and then it's just like gradually just yeah evolving. It's like. It blows my mind too sometimes like seeing a commercial and you're just like oh my god what movie is this and it's a game <laughs> and it's like i need that game it's and now fun. it's so almost like a like a lifelike it's all yeah, it's so it's close crazy. it's very it's, close it's, it's very wild like how close to like you said like lifelike it is and just mm -hmm. and it's just like these are like actual real people who are like playing these like playing these characters and it's like and it's like seeing them on the screen but they're just they're kind of animated it's just yeah. and it's just it's just it's amazing to me mm -hmm. just like how they put so much work and like effort into making like the city look real the like the music and just like 
everybody's like expressions and like walks in, and I just love the fact that there's like not like any like flag behind like behind it because I know some games like lag. Mm-hmm. And I remember with this one, it just it plays very smooth. There was a couple of times where it would kind of lag and it was like closely to the end, like where I'm at now, but like mostly through is like a smooth playing game. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's like a lot of fun. And and I'm kind of happy that I got back into gaming because it was like growing up, that was like my main jam. <laughs> and yeah. then it was just like in adulthood. And it's like you're just it's like life, and you're just like, okay, you know what? <laughs> let me get back to my like my old self let's get back into these games Mm -hmm. and it's like the best thing for me like it's just like a stress reliever like after work it's just one of my favorite things to do it's like it's like the meme isn't it like you know when you're a kid you have a lot of time but you don't have money to buy you know like games PlayStation four or five and now you're an adult you have the time (laughs) you have the money oh no sorry you have the money you have the machine but it's just collecting dust because you don't have the time to play exactly exactly and that's exactly how i feel it's like i Mm -hmm. keep telling myself i'm just like i'm like like this weekend i told myself i'm like i'm gonna play my game i told myself this last week i'm like I'm going to get back to my game. I'm going to mm-hmm. finish it. And it was just like, <laughs> where'd the time go? It was just like, yeah. I'm just like this every time. It's just like fast pace, fast pace, fast pace. And it's just like, okay, I need to slow down and take a second. But it's like <laughs> my little my little weekends be feeling like 30 minute breaks. And it's just like, it goes by so fast. So it's just like, yeah. I just have to like, I guess you could say I have to like schedule myself a time mm-hmm. <laughs> to where mm-hmm. it's like, let's get back into our games and just like have fun for a little bit yeah now it's chantal time that's just you know that's it exactly no. it's all about me <laughs> exactly no and look you need to take care of yourself first that's 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 the thing isn't it but here's the thing okay so it really as a, is as a person who has not gotten ps5 yet i still have only right. four because i mm-hmm. here's the thing right that's another yeah. thing with adulting you only have so much time so to split between like you know movies TV shows, possibly exactly. getting outside, you know, and being with friends, <laughs> maybe going yes. to a gym, right? And all of these. <laughs> so it's almost like, you know, there's a totally. time where, you know, you need to separate and you need to actually like, you know, prioritize. So I, I haven't actually switched exactly. on my PS4 in about a year, to be honest, or more. So now I know, like, I love the first, well, the first, I love the Spider-Man yes. game from like 2019, right? I've played mm-hmm. through that, love it. And I know I would love the second one, but I first of all I want to buy PlayStation Five because I want to experience it on a nice big TV, which I have, and with on that PlayStation Five quality. And second, but I know it's gonna be a lot of hours, me putting a lot of hours into it. So I don't yes. know whether I'm ready for that commitment. And uh, so, <laughs> and I used to be kind of like you. I used to be much more yeah. of a gamer when I was like growing up on like PC. Like yeah. you know, like I didn't have PlayStation. I had PlayStation One. I didn't. Yes, have two. I had. I had. I had the first two. I had the nice. first two. See, yeah. I, I never had the second one. I never, I've always heard about it. Mm-hmm. Never had it. But I've had the first one. <laughs> oh, I heard, look, well, it's still the best selling console ever. Like, it's still like yeah, 150 it, it really million. It really is. It is. It's like, it's totally. a staple. But, yeah, like, and you know, the... and yeah, yeah, and so I used to play a lot of games <laughs> on a PC, but like, and now mm-hmm. as an adult, I, I would play some on PlayStation 4, but lately I just like movies, mm-hmm. TV shows, movies, TV shows. And I'm kind of like, right. should I go back to gaming? And I know the Spider-Man 2 games. So which one would you, which, which one is your favorite? The first one or the second one? I would have to say out of those two, um, mm-hmm. it would have to be Spider-Man 2. I would have to say it would be the second, the second game because it's like, you know, because the first one is just about Peter and mm-hmm. like Peter being Spider Man, and then like of course you have Miles Morales. But then it's like when you get into Spider Man Two, you have Peter, Miles, and then Harry in the mix, and then you mm-hmm. have Craven the Hunter, and then you mm-hmm. have Venom. So it's like it's just jam packed, but it's like it's I guess you could say it's consistent. So it's yeah. just like it just follows like all the way through. Like you, it doesn't like. You know, like a movie, it doesn't have like, oh, like, how do we get over here to like to this point? Like, yeah. it like literally just takes you along the ride to like, we got to point A to point B all the way to point Z. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would have to say it would. And I think it was even visually, it was mm-hmm. a lot better than the first game. OK, so okay. I, this one definitely this one definitely the second part of Spider-Man definitely sticks out a lot more. And mm-hmm. I was the same way like you. I had like a PlayStation 4 for like a good long minute. Yeah. And then it was like playing my games like, you know, and I have like 
I have like smart TV and it's like a pretty decent one. And then there's one downstairs and it's like massive. So I was just like, okay, I'm tired of playing on this PS4. I'm like, mm -hmm. let's just upgrade this now that I have money. Um, and so now that was like the best choice I could have ever made. It's like, it's just so much better when it's like <laughs> you update everything. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I, I get you. I get you. <laughs> So wait, you mentioned you from so you originally from Illinois, but am I correct in saying you you don't live there just now at least? Exactly. Um, born and raised in Dixon, Illinois. Um, mm -hmm. a little tidbit about that place is like it's the hometown of Ronald Reagan. Ooh. Ooh. Um, <laughs> spicy. It was like yeah, it was like I lived like um I was like his house was his uh, his hometown or his hometown house. Mm -hmm. was behind mine like up the street where I used to live and it was like our little like school field trips we were like we're going to the house around Reagan and I'm just like <laughs> why <Yeah. laughs> and it's so it's just like that was like one of our our main or that's like one of the big things about that place is it was mm -hmm. the hometown of Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. um really small 16,000 people like everybody almost knew everybody yeah <laughs> um one high school you know like we had like one high school one middle school three mm -hmm. elementary schools that was pretty much it two bridges just to get across town <laughs> um so that's why I always tell people I'm like I'm from it's basically I am I'm from the Midwest. It's like I'm a it's like I'm not all the way city, I'm not all the way country, I'm just a little bit in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, now um, yeah. Do you live in Las Vegas, I wanna say? Yes, that's wow. correct. I've been here for ooh, we've been here for almost twenty, yeah, almost twenty years now. Um, so it's like yeah. half my like half like half my life is like <laughs> in between. So it's like Mm -hmm. like kid to like 19 i was in illinois and then now from from then now that's i'm here i'm in uh mm -hmm. i'm in vegas i'm in sin city my <laughs> when my dad uh when my dad retired he was just like he was like i'm done with the four seasons mm -hmm. he's like he's just like i'm done he's like i'm done i'm done i'm done mm -hmm. he's like we just packed everything up and i was like i'm going to college so i went to unlv that's my alma mater so um i was like it was just it was just a big culture shock so mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. just being in a bigger ooh, sorry being in a bigger city mm -hmm. um it was just a lot it was like a lot going on but it it took me a second to get used to this place um mm -hmm. it's very expensive i've heard <laughs> but <laughs> it's a very very expensive it's gotten a lot worse since we've been here i mean i you got to give it to them it's like not the taxes because you know i mean gambling and everything so it's like we really don't deal with taxes too 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 much yeah. but um it's 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 very interesting to live here <laughs> mm -hmm. you have people because we always have i always have people like you live in vegas i'm like yes i live in vegas i don't live on the strip i'm like yeah. that's two different things mm -hmm. and it's like you got it's like you just have to tell people like those are two different things like i live on the outside of that place like i don't like live there like all the time like i literally stay away from that place i see so how far like <laughs> roughly like you obviously you don't have to give, give me a specific location but how far you you live from this from the strip like you know would it be like an hour Ooh. drive two hour drive oh no 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 um because it's literally like maybe like 30 minutes away is it depending on the traffic I it, see. Just depends. I see. it just depends on the traffic just because i can get there quick because living here so long you start to maneuver and try to figure out different ways to get somewhere and of then on course. top of that i like to call this place um i like to say that the state flower is the orange cone because there's mm -hmm. so much construction here mm -hmm. <laughs> and streets are being <laughs> blocked off or detoured or all that but Mm -hmm. On a good day, I would say for my house to get to the strip, we'll probably be a little under 30 minutes. But like with the construction, like with the construction with like the construction and like the traffic, and it's like it's always it's like growing. It's just it's steadily growing. Yeah. So it's like more bodies are like coming from California because it's too expensive to live over there. But then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like they call they call Nevada, it's um well Vegas, they call uh Vegas the sis like the twin sister of like california so okay. it's like we follow so we kind of like follow their path on like prices and everything and i'm just like but why <laughs> so like so on a good day i will probably say like lesser than 30 minutes but like if you're dealing with traffic it's probably mm -hmm. a good 30 minutes yeah so why vegas like I, I take it if you moved there when you were 19 i take it it's mm -hmm. because of your parents they got the job there someplace or why vegas no 
um my dad um like i had a my dad had retired my dad yeah. was a mm-hmm. um he was a lineman um for comed um and he finally retired mm-hmm. and he was just he was just saying like he was ready to leave illinois he was yeah. just tired of you know everything and him and my he and my uh, uncle were supposed to have like a plan of like having their own business but of course it kind of fell through mm-hmm. so uh so we just this we decided to stay <laughs> mm-hmm. Even though, even though it was like, I wasn't ready to leave because I was like leaving my friends and everything. Yeah. And, and of course, my mom didn't want to leave because it's like all our family was there. <laughs> so it was just like a big jump for us to like leave and come to a different place. So that was really pretty much what it was. Mm-hmm. And I want to retire. And then at that time, I was like, oh, I'm like, I just graduated, you know, like the year before I had graduated high school. I had like went to community college. And then like after we came out here, I went to college so I was like perfect it's like I can just take all my credits and just move out this way and so it was like I went to school here Mm -hmm. I remember us actually checking out the school before we even moved out here and we were like it was like a whole big thing because we had our house built so it was like we were in like in a new community when we first moved out here so um so it was kind of nice because like before all the houses got built over here and we had first ones out here, I could see like a perfect shot of like the strip for my window. Like nice. I could see the stratosphere mm-hmm. and it was kind of cool to like look out my window, but now it's just a bunch of houses in the way. So it's, yeah. like, it's like, it's grown so much since. So um, yeah, it's like went to school and then of course uh, I got, I got my degree in journalism, but of course it's really hard to find a job out here for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's just like, I just, Deadly just like I said, I work from home. Mm-hmm. Um, I did retail for like a good almost 20 years. I I hated it. Um <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> I hated it so much. And it's like it didn't pay well. And then I'm like, I I'm like, I hate to go on a tangent about this, but I was like, I was one of their best workers. And it's like they just kept looking over me. And I was just like, well, I'm like, it's definitely time to leave. <laughs> But totally not before I got my 15 year, um, my 15 year uh, anniversary gift. I was like, let me get my gift first. And then I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> um, so I totally got my gift. And then I was like, two weeks. I'm like, bye. And it's like, literally, like, I got a new job. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's like, as soon as I started looking for another job, of course, it's another job that's like in customer service or support. But I'm like, at least I don't have to talk to people. Mm-hmm. I just had to chat with them, which is great. Oh, okay. Because I was like, customer um, service, he's still yes, in yes, the yes. Talk, but he yes, just chat. So I'm in, I see. <laughs> yeah, I'm in chat support. I started off on phones and I like, I just Ooh. went into chat like right after it went really quick. Yeah. So I was like, so happy. I was like, I don't want to talk to people. <laughs> I, I hate it. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't stand it. Um, I mean, it was so, it, it, to me, it was so much easier to like talk to people like face to face. Mm-hmm um then it is on the phone i don't know what it is it's just like dead air <laughs> and yeah it's, and, it's, and i hate that and i'm just like so it's so much better for me to just be able to like chat with people because i i don't know i was like i could type quicker than i could talk <laughs> and you talk really fast so like i, I <laughs> don't cannot even imagine how type you know how fast you type jesus christ <laughs> yes, yes, it's so bad. It's like people can still be typing and I'm already done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the finish and then I can just hit enter and I'm like, there's your answer right there. <laughs> damn efficiency. That's the name of the game, yeah. honestly. God, it really damn. is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as a, see, the problem with working in retail and I've worked, I didn't work in retail, but I'm, I'm in my school, mm-hmm. uh, college years, but I worked in a restaurant yeah. or hospitality. So it's not oh, retail, yeah. but it's, you know, you're talking to people, you're serving people. Mm-hmm. And the problem is people. <laughs> so like every once in a while, you get like the loveliest customer, right? You get, yes. you, you do get those people who would make your day, who would pay you yeah. a compliment when they see you go above and beyond. And then you mm-hmm. get them uh, not so nice people, or uh, as I would describe them, just plain for, you know, plain cunts. And I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck, <laughs> why, why? Like who hurt you? Like exactly, I actually had that once. Um, just I once in like, your fifteen yeah. years. Well, oh no, it was more. It was no. oh, there's more times. There was one time I almost <laughs> actually fought a customer. I'm not. I I can talk about it now because I'm like I don't even work there anymore. Please, if um, you want. <laughs> uh, it was it was the holidays. It was literally the holidays, and um, I had just came in, and it was like it was a night I had to close, and I was just like already dreading. I'm like I don't want to be here. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I already know that people are going to be assholes because it's it's Christmas time and people are rushing. Mm-hmm. And so 
I remember they told me, they were like, hey, we need you to work on that front table. Like, you just need to fold it down. So mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I'm like, I come in. I'm like, I get up there. I'm like, I'm starting to fold. I'm like, I'm saying hello to people when they come in. Um, we had our security person up there at the front. And then there was this one lady who decided to like come through the exit <laughs> instead of the entrance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, the secu- and the security person at the time, they just told him like, hey, like, don't come through that way because we're, we have people who need to get out. So if you're like coming through, you're like in the way, whatever. And she literally got upset because she said something to her. And I was just like, oh, my God. I was just like, all she told you is just come through the entry door. Don't come through the outdoor. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, I'm like, I'll just let her handle it. And so the lady just still came in and mm-hmm. I was just like, hello, you know, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, I'm like, how's your night? And she like kind of like went off on a tangent and she was just like, this lady's giving me problems about, you know, just like blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, and now you're giving me. And I was like, whoa, I'm like, <laughs> all I asked you, lady, was how was she doing? And she and then that was it. But then it's like she kind of like walked through the store and, and then she came back around and she was like, she like was still going off. And then she said something about like our store. She said our store number. And she was like, good job, like number, blah, blah, blah. And then she like came back my way and she like got in my face and was just like going off on me. And I was like, I was like, you know, I'm like, what you're not going to do. And it was like, you can, <laughs> it was like seeing the camera back, like seeing the, uh, the, uh, the camera, like after when it happened, I was literally like standing over this lady with my hand in her face, like going <laughs> off on her. The security person had to get in between us. She had to like push me out of the way because she literally mm-hmm. thought I was going to fight this lady. <laughs> and at the time, like we had to wear walkies on the floor. And I just remember my supervisor on the, um, on the walkie, she was like, Hey, Chantel, like go to the back, like take a minute. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I just remember, like, I had to, like, walk away. Um, I literally was, like, fuming. I just remember my best friend being there <laughs> with mm-hmm. her husband because she didn't live that far. And I could just see her at the corner of my eye. Like, she was, like, standing up front, like, do I need to do something? Like, do I need to help you out? I'm like, no, dude. I'm like, I got it. And I just, like, went to the back and I had to, like, calm down. I think there was, like, they had, like, pie back there. So I, like, had a pizza pie. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, and then of course I had to come back out and I had to re and then I had to finish the table and I was like upset. <laughs> I was like, I literally just started my shift mm-hmm. and I literally just, it was just like, this lady just didn't have nothing better to do, but like give people the, like just give people problems. And it's like, we had that a lot. Like I literally mm-hmm. had a customer come in before, like I asked her how her day was going and she was like, oh, I was in a car accident. And I was just like, so you came yeah, in yeah. The, the shop I was and gonna I say, yeah, why are you shopping then? <laughs> <laughs> and I asked her, and I was like, are you, I was like, are you okay? And she was like, are you just asking to ask or do, or do you genuinely care? And I was like, I'm asking because I want to make sure that you're okay because mm-hmm. you're in my store shopping and you claim you were in an accident. Mm-hmm. And she was like, a, and she was like a total bitch. I was just like, okay, so I'm like, then why are you here? I'm like, go to the hospital if you're in pain. I'm like, whatever's on sale, I promise you it will still be here. <laughs> It's like go get yourself checked out. God, Jesus Christ! Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot. I have a lot. We could be here all day, but it's just yeah, right. those are like those two. Those are the two that literally stood out because I literally thought I was gonna fight that lady that one day, and it was the holidays. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. lady, it's the holidays. <laughs> yeah, it's mm-hmm. okay. I never. I don't think I ever had anything that intense, but I do remember mm-hmm. on my mm-hmm. like a previous job, what I would go mm-hmm. around the entire scotland installing these like ca- uh, cash registers like touch screen machines pretty much okay machines, right? yeah, yeah and yeah. i remember one customer and i was still fairly new it was like within my first six eight months or so and there was one mm-hmm. customer there was this like indian restaurant there was an indian dude and i don't even remember what was the issue but it was some issue and i was trying to be calm and polite but we got into a screaming match like full-on mm-hmm. screaming match <laughs> and I and I still like it didn't like swore or anything like that because I was still a professional, but right. we were both shouting, mm-hmm. like proper shouting at each other. Oh, yeah. And I walked out and I was like, uh, I think he's gonna call my boss and I'm just gonna fuck, fucking be fired because I just shouted at a customer. And then right. he doesn't, and we became <laughs> friends. And every time he would call to change a menu or change an item, he would always request mm-hmm. me and I'm like, Hey, look, <laughs> how's he my friend? How are you my friend? And I was like, Oh, we're we're mates now. Okay, cool. Right. I was like, that worked out. I love that. Just... And I actually, it's just, it's perfect. And then I actually had a, another time where I was actually helping this lady. Mm-hmm. And I just remember her and she was like, she was just so rude. And I was being like the nicest that I could be, you know, mm-hmm. like they always tell you, fake it till you make it. Yeah. <laughs> 
and I was very good at it. <laughs> but um, I just remember I was helping this lady, and I just remember her like she was like so mean, mm -hmm. and it was just crazy. Like after I had finished checking her out, her son just looked at me, and he was just like. I am so sorry. And I was mm -hmm. just like, dude, I'm like, it's fine. I'm like, I deal with people all the time. I'm like, it's, I'm like, I'm just, it's just water, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. But it was just crazy to me because I just remember my boss at the time, he came back and he was like, hey, he was like, that lady, she was like, she said that you were, she was like, she said that you were a bitch. And I was like, she did? And she's like, yeah, she said that you were like barking at her. And I was just like, hold on. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, and I'm like, it was the, uh, she, I was like, it was the total way around. And he was mm -hmm. like, I saw everything. He was like, you're fine. I was like, okay. I was like, thank you. I'm like, even her, I'm like, even her son had to apologize for it. I was like, and I'm the bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it was just crazy how people, it's just crazy how people are when they feel like entitled, like, you know, like you have to help me. Like if you're here, mm -hmm. you have to help me. And I'm like, well, I'm like, technically I'm like, I understand. I'm like, it is my job. But I'm like, I don't have to. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, so I it's just. I stand behind Sorry. this theory that everybody should work at least a year or so, like in hospitality or retail, to be on yes. the receiving yes. end of all that bullshit. Yes. You know, so it's... next time when you are no longer doing these jobs, you know, you might exactly. be a bit, a bit patient or you might be a bit mm -hmm. forgiving that if your food takes a bit longer, don't be, don't be right. a dick. Like, you know, <laughs> just, uh, just don't be a dick. And I... like, and I have so much respect for people, you know, in that industry. And even more so, my mom was like, when she goes into stores, she would be like, I would just hear them horror stories that you were telling me. And she's like, I always just go in there and just, you know, just be nice. Don't because I, it's weird because it's like, if I go into like a store and like when I was still in it and it's like, I would just go into like a, just a store that wasn't even my job. I would like see something out of place. And I'd be like, that doesn't go here. I'm like, they didn't fold this right. Or I'm like, that's not hanging right. I'm like, I hated, I just hated that. Even like shopping, like I was like at a hot topic, which is like a, a pop culture yeah, store, or story. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, like going to one of those and a guy was like, Hey, he's like, do you want a job? I was like, no, I'm like, I have one. So I'm like, I know what you guys are going through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I understand. I was like refolding a shirt that I had pulled out instead of just shoving it back into the shelf. Like people always do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it literally takes us like, just, it takes us literally it could take me, I remember, like, if a table was destroyed, it would literally take me, like, 30 minutes to do, like, a, like, to fold the table nicely when it could take a customer, like, five seconds just to destroy it. Yeah, yeah. And uh -huh. and that would be, that would just, <laughs> that would drive me insane, like, if I had to go through, like, all the shops, and then they'd be like, oh, you, like, you gotta come back, this table's, I'm like, I just did that table. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm and that's the one thing that's another thing that I'm I'm happy I'm out of retail because I'm like I hate I hate it looking at clothes like even doing my laundry I was just like my clothes would just sit <laughs> it would sit in the dryer because I'm like I'm tired of folding like I'm tired yeah <laughs> and that was another and that was like another thing when people would see me fold because I'm like a fast folder and they're like really good folds I'm like 15 years of course I'm gonna be a great folder <laughs> but it would just drive me nuts when people would be like oh would you want to come to my house and fold my clothes I'm like lady I don't even like folding my clothes what makes you think I want to come over to your house and fold your clothes <laughs> but those skills are like you know very great yeah. like you know because like I worked in a restaurant so I don't I don't I cannot fold you know quickly mm -hmm. however I can cut <laughs> because I used to be like you know I wasn't yeah. chef I'm like not nowhere near chef level, no. But I was in like semi professional kitchen or semi decent kitchen, so I actually right. had to learn the like knife skills. So until mm -hmm. even now, I still can cut like onion or anything very quickly, just and cho it's chopped. And like even my girlfriend, every time like she cooks, like sometimes she asks me, mm -hmm. "Oh, can you cut this for me?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, done." And she's like. How the fuck do you do that? Like, what the fuck? See, I would love, I would love to cut like that. And I'm like so awkward when it comes to a knife. I'll just be like, don't cut off your fingers. Don't cut off your fingers. To be fair, it's easier than expected. <laughs> like, I remember it didn't take me that long. And I'm not, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not the quickest of learners. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. And like, it's easier than expected. <laughs> like, you just need to, you just yeah. need to like practice, practice, practice. And, it, you know, when you're yeah. forced to do it, otherwise you're going to be behind on your prep for the next day. Mm -hmm. You kind of get into like a habit of like, oh, fuck. <laughs> And just you go, <laughs> you go for that. Got it. <laughs> no, but okay. So you mentioned Las Vegas. So mm -hmm. this should be interesting. If I asked you, yes. hey, I'm going there for a week. Where would you take mm -hmm. me? And what I, what do I need to see as a somebody who's never been anywhere in the US, right? 
Where would we yeah. go in Las Vegas? What would he, what would I need to see? And where would we go to eat? Because I know like the strip obviously is quite iconic. Oh my god. I know, right? Yeah. It's, so yeah. where would be your top <laughs> picks? Where would you take me? You're like, okay, you're seeing this, 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 and we're eating here, here, here. Okay, so straight off the bat, like when you come to Vegas, of course you always have to see the strip. The strip is of always course. like the the main, you know, the main attraction because you mm-hmm. got the bright lights, you got like the little like the Bellagio water show. Yeah. Um, I really I really hate that Treasure Island took away their little um ship show where they had like the little two pirate ships and they would like it would be like a entertainment like when you're walking by you can stop and it's like i think it was like on top of the hour and they would mm-hmm. just like do like a little musical numbers and they will do like an actual show outside and that was like so much fun and i hate that they took that away oh. um but of course you have the you have the las vegas sign of course where you go out there and you stand and you get your picture taken the only thing i don't like about it now is that they just made it more touristy where instead of when you could just before you would literally have to be like dropped off and just pray that you can get across the street because before they didn't have parking uh. <laughs> so now instead of just you know walking out to the sign getting your picture taken and then like walking away they literally make you stand in line it's like a queue now of course <laughs> they make you stand in line and get your picture taken which i like it's just it's just i don't know it's just tedious but of course you would have to stop there um Another spot would be the Pinball Hall of Fame, which is like, mm. it's on the strip, but it's kind of like past it just a little bit where it's just full of old school pinball machines. Okay. And um, they made, it was a lot smaller and it was off the strip before, but then they kind of put it on the strip just at the very end of where the, where the Las Vegas sign is at. So mm. um, it's very massive. And it's just, you can go in there and you're like literally in there all day. (laughs) And it's kind of funny because they almost kind of treat it like if it was like the casino where it's like, you're walking in, it's like almost like no windows. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so you're just, it's like kind of like you're in your element, just playing pinballs, uh, pinball games. And then you have another one, which is you have, of course, like any other place you have Dave and Buster's, you Mm -hmm. have um, GameWorks, um, you have... um, what else because of course it's like you're trying to go somewhere here and it's like it's made for adults and it's not like and that's what i always tell people i'm like this is like a big playground for adults not for kids they do they do have adventure adventure dome which is like their amusement park at circus circus um but i really wouldn't go there because it's it needs to be updated (laughs) but they call it sin city for a reason right very they call it sin city for a reason because you have um you got your strip clubs, you got your alcohol, you got your gambling. Of course, I'm you dead. got dispensaries. <laughs> you got your dispensaries like on every single block um, in walking distance. <laughs> so, and of course, you have your clubs. They have like their big main clubs where they pull people in when they have like celebrities coming through. And then, of course, they have the link where it's like in between two of our hotels, which is, um, ooh, they changed the names of them. Um, but it's the link in. What is it? Is it O'Shea? It used to be O'Shea's, but um, I think it's like the I can't even remember the name. But um, in between mm. is like a row of like stores and like restaurants, and of course you can like walk through to get to like the casinos. But I will say this: with when it comes to the food, I understand that people want to stay on the strip, but you have to come off the strip okay. for the good food. To me, I feel like you have to come off the strip to the good food because they have like so many different places of foods or like they're just like mom and pop shops or like mm-hmm. like these little holes in the walls like and it's and it's crazy how you can just you don't know these places until like you have people like hey like you need to go here you need to go here so like one of my favorite spots um that I like to go to here would have to be oh my god this is so hard <laughs> uh for one for the strip I would have to stay for the strip um I think it's yeah, Guy Ferrari. His his shot his uh his place is very, very good. Mm -hmm. His place is inside his place is inside the link. That's one of the new like hotel and experience where we have our big like the big Ferris wheel, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I have not been on yet, but I would love to be on there. Um yeah, so it's um what is that place called? It's Guy Ferrari's there it is, it's Guy Ferrari's um Vegas Kitchen and Bar. Mm-hmm. and he's it's like the unique twists on like burgers and stuff i remember 
I had a sandwich stacked. It <laughs> it was like the burger, and then it was like it was like another meat. Mm-hmm. And then it was like the condiments and it was like, I literally had to hold it with two hands and I actually have a picture of me trying to like bite into it. <laughs> and it was, and it was just like the funniest thing because it was like the bite I took wasn't even the bite I thought I, t- I thought I took. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, but it was like, his food is like so good. And it's like, of course it's massive. And then you have um hash house, a go-go where it's like, another place that's like a unique twist on like breakfast foods Mm. um so um but it is it's like you get like this massive plate of food like you can literally it could be you and another person and you can like eat off of this plate together like Mm -hmm. you don't even need like um (laughs) you don't even need a whole plate to yourself is that massive um, I remember this time I went and I didn't even eat for the whole day and they do like a chicken and waffles which is Mm. like one of my main like favorite meals so it's like you have like I think it's like two massive waffles mm-hmm. in the middle of that waffle it's a, it's like pieces of bacon it's like a full piece of bacon in both piece in both waffles okay <laughs> and then on top of that you have like the chicken on top mm-hmm. and and of course and then they like stab it with the with the knife and everything and it's so it's like I literally cleared that whole plate out and I just remember like the waitress was like you're gonna need like a she's like are you gonna need anything for that I was like nope I'm like I'm gonna finish this whole thing (laughs) and it was just crazy because like I was like halfway to like my last bite and then the manager came over (laughs) and he was just like making sure like he's like you're gonna finish that aren't you I was like yes I am I'm like that's the main reason why I'm here I'm like Mm -hmm. I was ready to eat (laughs) and they were like really amazed that I actually finished this whole plate by myself now I'm like I can't even do it I'm like I have to share (laughs) yeah so (laughs) <laughs> it, it and it's worth the money it's totally worth the money mm-hmm. um i would have to say another spot would have to be um it's another place it's called cajun kitchen um Ooh, yes. it's like their own little style like their own little twist on like southern food and mm-hmm. like occasion mm-hmm. they did a gumbo taco oh that sounds good it, it's like it was like the greatest thing i've ever had in my life because mm-hmm. you get to dip it in the gumbo it's mm-hmm. like so it's kind of like um I guess you could say it's like a shrimp taco but it's like all like the the flavors of the gumbo and it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like the best thing in the world and it's like the little cup you have too is like if you still have some love it's like and you got rice it's like you can just pour that on on top of the rice and then it's like you have gumbo. <laughs> mm, that sounds it's amazing. So, it's so great and then another spot would be Texas Roadhouse which is really hard to get in it is so packed but it's mm-hmm. like so worth it mm-hmm. um i just um you would literally have to like call in it's like as soon as they open and be like hey i'm like um like reservations so it's like you're literally put yourself on a wait list and um and it's like the sooner you can get yourself on that wait list the better because if you don't it's like you can forget going that day it's like you're mm-hmm. just gonna have to try the next day so it just depends on like where you go to because of course you have like you know in and out which is like not all that great. Mm-hmm. Um, Chick fil A, I'm like just I'm like I try to stay away from like the main like McDonald's, Burger King, all that. I try yeah. and do other things outside of the box. So it's it just I try to like their buffets are great too. Like don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, like their buffets are amazing as well. It just depends, I guess, on the casinos that you do go to because. Our favorite one used to be the one that was at the Rio Casino where it was seafood and like your like the buffet. So like one side mm-hmm. it was like lobster, lobster tails, claw, um, yeah, crab, crab claws, shrimp. Mm-hmm. And then you have like your, you know, like your different countries of like, you know, food and everything. But you had to have um, you had to have to get a stamp like and then they would do like the little like light just to yeah, see yeah. like okay you can go to seafood like you have to have a stamp to get into the seafood section because if you didn't have a stamp for the seafood section you were not getting in yeah it was like their little vip section for seafood <laughs> <laughs> but then they eventually got rid of it and it, we were like we were like all excited because my uncle had like came out and mm-hmm. it was his first time and we were like we're going to take you to this restaurant like you're gonna love it like you're gonna love this buffet and it's like as soon as we got there the whole section was gone <laughs> and so it was like we, we got you all hyped up for nothing <laughs> so it was just it was kind of devastating when you go back to like one of your favorite spots that you like go to like mm-hmm. during like because it was like me and my dad's like main spot for like 
for our birthdays because our birthdays are our birthday is five days apart nice. and so we would kind of like celebrate it together and like with like okay like we'll go here for our birthdays and so it was nice but now it's just like okay now we got to figure out what we're gonna do now <laughs> yeah so, because it was like our go-to spot for like if we didn't do it for like christmas because we don't do the whole like you know cooking for thanksgiving and christmas we just will cook for thanksgiving and then we'll go out for christmas and that was like our our little place we would go to and now it's just like all right we just got to figure something else out now mm -hmm. that's that's amazing i'm i'm kind yeah. of su i'm surprised to hear guy fieri like you know because i yeah again, as somebody <laughs> who's never Like I, I'm aware of him, but I'm aware of him mm -hmm. to the point where he's kind of the punchline of everything, right? He's yeah. like, <laughs> he's like the carrot top of a, of a culinary culinary like scene in America. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Fieri, he's a crazy guy who just you know goes to Flavor Town and like has. Yeah. Does he have like like crazy sauces? I want to say. Does yeah, he? Yeah, like... it's like. Yeah, he has like yeah, he has like different kinds of sauces. Mm -hmm. He like it's just yeah, he's very very big like on like the unique twist on the food scene. And then also we have like uh Gordon Ramsay out here as well. That's another place. Gordon Ramsay's burger. Oh my god. That, that was, was my like, question. Yes, that was like so good. His um I had I think I had one that had like um uh, had a burger that had like duck fat on it and I was just like mm. And I'm like, this is like the best burger I think I've ever had in my entire <laughs> in my entire life. Um, we had like it was me, and my mom, and we had took my grandmother, her mom there mm -hmm. um for dinner once. And it was just it was like her last, like one of her last days here mm -hmm. from visiting. And it was like, okay, let's take her here. And I was just like in awe because it was so it it's like his food is like amazing. And then mm -hmm. we also went to his other one, which was the um what was it it's the pub in caesar's palace like, yes it's like Cy caesar's we went there for my mom's birthday mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i had their um what was it it was the mash it was the um beef wellington no it... um not the beef wellington um mm -hmm. um this was his other like kind of small place it's like a pub mm -hmm. it's like the pub and i had like the mash it was the sauce it was like sausage and mash that i, oh, had. I see i see and it was so good i like i cleared the <laughs> i cleared the whole plate again <laughs> Um, but speaking of beef all the time, um, mm. uh, for my parents' 30th anniversary, my dad surprised my mom and he took her to his restaurant and at the Paris rest, um, at Paris Hotel, um, which I think it's just called, I think it's like Ramsey. Um, he like surprised her, um, and they went there and mm -hmm. she came back and she was like, she was like, I want to bring you, she was like, I, she was like, I have to bring you home food because she's mm -hmm. like, you're not going to believe, you know, the food. She ended up getting a beef Wellington and she mm. brought half of it home. And I was just like, that was, that right there was like butter. It was just, mm -hmm. it was just perfect. And I just wish she could have like, I'm like, can you just like order me one? But it was just crazy when she told me the price of her uh, Caesar salad when it was like one piece of lettuce. And then it was like, a, I think it was like how they made their crouton into like a circle. <laughs> and it was like, she said it was like $15. I was like, why did you get it? Yeah, the prices are <laughs> just crazy, but apparently, like, people but seriously, love it. yes. And it was like, but it was, I for them, because I'm like, it was their 30th, and it's like he wanted to treat her, and I was like, that was like the best treat he could have did, you know. And so, I just it was really good, and I'm glad that she like brought me like a souvenir <laughs> back, so mm -hmm. I got to like try her food. But I think at the time, I don't, I forgot how much she told me the beef Wellington was. Oh, it's expensive. You, this, I know. And I'm like, at that time, this was like their, their 30th was like, yeah, almost 10 years ago, I think. Yeah. And so it was weird now because I'm like trying to figure out like how much is it now? Because I know, um, there was a one place I had went to, it's called Stuff My Turkey, which is like <laughs> turkey. It's no. like, it's, um, it's turkey legs. Mm -hmm. And it's like this guy, he does like his own, like twist as well on turkey legs where I got this one where it's called the Godfather. Mm -hmm. where it's a turkey leg and it's stuffed with um alfredo it's like shrimp alfredo Ooh. and so i know that when i got it um i literally couldn't even finish it i think i ate off of it for like two days and then i was like all right i'm gonna freeze the rest and then i'm um, like when i'm ready for it i'll go back to it but at mm -hmm. the time i think it was under 40 dollars when i got it mind you this was like last year yeah and 
my mom and my mom and dad, they were, they were out and about and they like called me. They were like, Hey, we're going to stop here. Like, do you want something? And I was like, yeah, I was like, just, you know, bring whatever. And they left because they were like, it was more expensive because the fact that, um, mine that I had got, it was like now $50 Mm -hmm. and I didn't even pay $50 last time. And this was just not even a year ago. So I'm just like, it's just crazy how insane these prices just keep spiking in like the cost of living just keeps spiking and that's why I'm just like okay so like how am I gonna get my own place if I'm like literally working every day just to survive you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, so same, it's same just, here no same, yeah. same here we my girlfriend and I we went to Edinburgh um, Gordon Ramsay has a like a bread and kitchen I want to say that's mm-hmm. the name of it and we had a meal there it was lovely it was it wasn't like you know amazing but it was very lovely and i wanted to take the b wellington however he only in at least in there it's only right. you cannot order it per one person you need to have it in couple and right. that price i have a feeling it was over 100 pounds which would be like you know 120 30 dollars i would imagine for two oh, wow. So oh, wow. my girlfriend wasn't feeling it that day. So we yeah. fought, we had like a burger and something. And I, I I think I had a steak and I was still happy with my steak. She wasn't as happy with hers, but you mm-hmm. know, it happens. Uh, but the, like, yeah, no, like I want to see in Las Vegas, like because I yeah. watch V or we watch House Kitchen. That's the mm-hmm. only show of uh, Ramses I watch because they're like, they actually know how to cook or most of them. And it's always yeah. like about a you know Las you know Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas, and I'm like, Damn, yeah. I really want to go there once at least to. Get... <laughs> but I know you have to make a reservation because, like, when they opened, they were fully booked for a year, like proper. Like they haven't even opened. They announced a opening, wow. and, and I've checked, and the oh, booking system wow. was proper, like filled for a year, and it wasn't even open. <laughs> Oh my God. obviously he's that popular and that, that's the menu from the from the yeah. show so everybody wants to go and ha- have his famous risotto and you know be right. wellington and all that shit right? yeah oh yeah so because, yeah because we have a house kitchen yeah we have a house kitchen too so yeah mm-hmm. so it's just crazy just to see it just to, like mm-hmm. drive by and i'm like and we're always like, oh, like one day we're gonna you know we're gonna try and get in there and i was like do you know how much that stuff costs <laughs> yeah it's like I've seen it's, it's like i just it's like i just it's like one of those times where it's like treat yourself it's like if you have the money treat yourself that's and that be kind of like a it. nice birthday or anniversary gift or like yeah. you know, celebration it's, gift yeah that's the thing right exactly, like you know yeah, i'm gonna exactly, go there yeah, every yeah. week well you right. can if you like you know if you have the dough you can go there for every week like, oh. exactly. but you know for us plebs you know we cannot go there right. every week <laughs> right it's like I can't even do that. I can't do that every day. Like no way. There's like no way in hell. That's just, why I just can't understand that. It's like how can you people do like this stuff like every day and your bank account is not hurting? Like mm-hmm. mine hurts when I mine hurts when I take out twenty dollars. Like <laughs> you sneeze and then suddenly your bank account is like broke. <laughs> it's like yeah. how do I have an overdraft? Like what happened? I, I I feel you. I feel you. It's just oh yes. so amazing. No, but those are some lovely recommendations. Like I'm trying to think back. The gumbo. Mm-hmm. See, I've had we so here where I live, we have mm-hmm. a one uh restaurant. Uh, it's Southern Restaurant. It's probably the only one we have here, to be honest. And the guy yeah. used to live someplace like Louisiana for a couple of years because he's he's got a family mm-hmm. there. But he came back, opened this restaurant. So and every time we would go there, I would order gambo oh and mm. it's like if if this is at least 10 percent to the real thing i would be so happy yeah. with gambo because like that that shit is so good like a oh bit God. of rice it's so great bit of sausage some like prawns <laughs> like some, you know some like you know veggies and it just like warms yes. you up it just it warms you up. oh so fucking <laughs> lovely and gambo so when he said <laughs> what was it gambo tacos yes it's Damn. so good it's mm-hmm. so it's so so good i was like because I, I I like to try different stuff like all the time whenever I go to like the if I'm going to the same restaurant, I don't always get the same thing. It's like if there's something else on there, of course mm-hmm. it's like I wanna I wanna try it. So yeah. I'm like, um, I think it was like my first it wasn't my first time being there, but it was my first time trying it because I was just like mm-hmm. I asked them, I was like, How is that? And they were like, Oh, they were like, It's good. They were like, It's worth it. So I was just mm-hmm. like, All right, I was like, like, let me give it a try. And mm-hmm. it probably it was literally like one of the but it was kind of like a street taco and it's Mm -hmm. like one of their it's like one of their best things off of their menu because they even have like 
they have gumbo fries, they have bayou mm-hmm. fries, like bourbon street fries. And um, it's just, they have like, they make their own little like soul rolls, which is like an egg roll. But instead of it being like, um, you know, like the same ingredients in an egg roll, it's like uh, ingredients of like mac and cheese with sweet potatoes, but we call Ooh. them yams. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, so mac and cheese with yams, and that is, like, literally, you have, like, the sweet and the, like, savory, and it's, like, so, so good. Say less, get, like, I'm there. Like... <laughs> right? And you get 12 pieces for $7. To me, I think that's great. For 7 you get, for $7, you get 12 So, uh-huh. to me, I'm, like, you're, it's, yeah, it's definitely, definitely, that's... their food is really, really good. No, I've always said like, you know, we were talking to, uh, I was talking to my girlfriend. I was like, we need to go for some sort of like a trip to the U- in- United States because again, mm-hmm. I've never been, I don't think she's been. And okay. I said, I, I told her, but I want to travel to not just like the stereotypical, like New York, California, but I want to right. go to those red states like Texas, Louisiana, like, you know. San Luis, mm-hmm. like because I know those states are, well, you know, <laughs> there might be some questionable people. Uh, everyone, you know, yeah. you might bump into some <laughs> some questionable people. I've seen my fair share yeah. of, like, on the internet and heard yeah. stories, but <laughs> ex- like especially fr- from Hell's Kitchen, like I know the yeah. southern cuisine. Like you know, I would love to try grits. I've never tried the grits, right? And that seems like my shit. That seems like something I would really enjoy. I would love to try <laughs> proper gumbo. I would love to try yes. like you know. All the like you know the green the colored greens mm-hmm. right like oh mac my god and cheese yes. just oh my god like just, so just come on over just no yeah no I, just, I will like, just come on. no no honestly like I will <laughs> and again and even Gordon Ramsay himself says yeah well, there's nobody who does barbecue as well as Americans because obviously you guys most of the year you have the weather so like you know if you want proper right. barbecue you need to go to like thanks Texas you need to go to like uh, you know Louisiana all, all those like you know states because yeah, they know exactly. what they're doing they know what they're doing exactly so that's just... how, and that's how i feel too it's like because they it's like because vegas they they try they mm-hmm. try with mm-hmm. the barbecue they try and it's like it's a hit and miss but yeah. there is a one place that we did find where it's kind of outside of texas it comes from texas it's a place called l2 mm-hmm. and it's like i think my mom found it and of course it's like we i think we have i think we've been back like three times <laughs> Nice. It was like so good, and it was like because of course it's like we had famous days. But I'm like famous days sucks. Like <laughs> <laughs> like their barbecue sucks. Like okay. now I'm like that's not barbecue. Um, so it's like we found like this place L2. It's a little. It's like a. It's like in Vegas. It's like it's so. It's like everywhere you have to drive. You have to drive somewhere, even though it's in town. It's mm-hmm. it's still a far drive, you know. But it's definitely worth the ride to get there. And it's like it's not too. It's like it's not too busy when we go, so it's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. But it's like the food was perfect. Like we've ordered, we even ordered like their like their sides. Like they have like the um, it's like the um, not the it's like the onion strings, and they're like the best thing in life. Like we literally one day we just are like do you want to get an order? It's like, you get an order, I get an order. And it was like, we just yeah. went and got it. And then we like went back, like came back home and like, it's just, it's like perfect. And then um, like when you said grits, shrimp and grits, it's mm-hmm. like one of like another one of my favorites because it's like, I love shrimp. And then you got this grits. It's like perfect. Mm-hmm. And then like, in a way I love to eat my grits. I like, and people are like, you don't put sugar in grits. I'm like, yes, you do. I'm like, yeah, put sugar in your grits. I know there's and a then... debate between like sweet and sa- uh, savory grits. Like that much I know. <laughs> That's all I know. Because I like my sweet and savory because what I do, I do cheesy grits. Ooh. So I do, I do the sugar. I put the little bit of cheese on the top and then I will, if I have bacon, I will crunch up some bacon and put it on top, mix it up. And it's like, it's like the best thing on earth. <laughs> You're a woman of culture, I see. Like, all yes, right. I just, I just, I love it. It's just like one of my favorite things. Like, cheesy grits is like one of my like favorites. It's like mm-hmm. just, I don't know. It's just, it's just one of them foods. It just feels like, I guess you could say it feels home, like mm-hmm. homey. So mm-hmm. definitely grits, greens are amazing. Um, mm-hmm. It just depends because people would have their differences of like what kind of meat to put in it. Because okay. I know my mom puts my mom puts turkey. You can mm-hmm. put you can put like another. I think it's like ham hock. You can put in there, but I know my mom uses turkey. Mm-hmm. She uses smoked turkey, and mm-hmm. it's like so good. Mm-hmm. I like because everybody ends up loving my mom's greens. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so um yeah greens amazing grits amazing mm-hmm. i'm just trying to get the louisiana because it's like my parents went last year for my aunt's birthday i can't go because work obviously yeah. but they were just like oh they're like the food is amazing i was like did y'all have any bengays like i like i really want to try bengay like that's like one of my biggest things when i get down there mm-hmm. um but i do remember like when you were saying like there are some interesting people you know yeah. <laughs> you know so i just remember my mom was like she was like i'm not going down there to you know bourbon street she's like you know your dad was down there but she's like nope she's like that's not me she's like i'm staying in a house yeah and i was like i don't blame you because i'm like i'll be out and about like during the day and then at night i'm like all right i'm going inside like mm. you guys have fun down there <laughs> so I, I i understand especially out here in vegas like you got some sketchy people like, <laughs> it's like and it's and it's kind of and it's also kind of like scary it's not scary it's kind of sad when you see like all the homeless people who are like displaced out here yeah and that's like my main like that's like that's that's the thing that drives me nuts about this town is that you make so much money mm-hmm. from like like from like the Super Bowl that was just here last month. Then mm-hmm. you had the Formula One that's gonna keep coming here every year. Yeah. And then you built the sphere, and then it's like you got you're bringing a baseball team, and now you got a football team. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you have all these homeless people mm-hmm. that are just that are like misplaced, that yeah. are just living out on the street, mm-hmm. and and it's like, and there's nothing that you can do for these people, but you're wasting like all this money on entertainment because that's what makes this town but i'm like but you just don't care about your people you're just caring about the tourists that are coming Mm -hmm. through and it's like oh just be making money hand over fist but it's like but you can't even take care of the people that actually live in this town which sucks that system isn't it because the homeless people don't buy stuff the tourists will come and buy stuff so you know they're like right. you know what? Uh, fuck them people you know we love tourists fuck fuck our people it's just and it's yeah. it's mad it's it's and, uh. it was, and it was just sad because even like during covid when we had the whole you know the shutdown and everything yep and it was like they had the police down there to keep them out of the rooms i'm like but you could have used those rooms for those mm-hmm. people it's like I'm like afterwards. It's like you could have burnt the stuff. It it would have been okay. You have the money to replace it. Like, yeah. but get these people off the street. Let them have a room or something. But it's just like they don't care. But then <laughs> you know if they care. they replaced it. Like you know the the stockholders would have had like slightly less of a bonus that year. Like, yeah. <laughs> would anybody think of the stockholders? Please, please, just right. once, right? <laughs> just once. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, looks so good out here, people. Mm-hmm. No, like, Las Vegas, besides this problem, which I mm-hmm. happen to understand, it's not just Vegas issue. It's just, you know, California yeah. is also quite bad. Very. Uh, yeah, so it sounds lovely, minus this, which, again, is not mm-hmm. just Vegas thing. So... Yeah, it's everywhere. It <laughs> but, no, yeah, but it's it's honestly sounds good. And, again... I've seen so many, obviously, movies where you mm-hmm. see Vegas, you see the famous strip, you see, you know, Caesars, you see the Fontaine, yeah. you know, like you see all that, you know, like shit. So I would yeah. love to see it at least once live. You have you have to. You have to at least experience once in your life. I mean, I'm like, it's, you know, people are just like, but it's lights. But I'm like, it's not just that. It's more. It's just it's, like just it's been the vibe. for so long. It's the yeah, vibe. It's literally the vibe. It literally is. And it's like you're just walking down the street and you just have like people like, you know, slapping them cards at you. They're for mm-hmm. like strippers and like all that <laughs> stuff. And I'm just like, it's just so weird just to be like, you know, like you're driving down the street and you just see like a like a advertising truck, like advertising like strip <laughs> yeah, yeah or like some kind of entertainment that's going on down there it's it's full of debauchery but i mean you gotta experience it at least once or twice in your life you have to man's gotta live hey like you know <laughs> and here's that's the another... thing no here's yeah, the thing it's like that's okay go ahead no i was gonna say like here's the thing like it's yeah. not just light it's the vibe it's the same like new york it's not just you know are there yeah. many buildings and many people yeah there are but it's not just that it's new york yeah. it's the vibe of new york <laughs> it's the vibe of san francisco it's a vibe of uh, california for uh, you know mm-hmm. la and obviously las vegas it's a unique right. vibe to that place it so, is it's just and it's crazy how like you can walk inside and mm-hmm. you will not see you will not see a clock 
Mm-hmm. They do not want you to. They do not want you to check the time. Yep. And you will not have windows. It's just gonna be pure dark, so you don't know how long you've been in there until you walk outside. It could be dark or it could be the daytime. It's like you never know. <laughs> exactly. How much? How much? How much is okay? I was gonna. I was gonna ask how. Uh, what's the most you've ever lost in a casino? But you know what? Let's. What's the most you've won? If you. If you. If you know. Have you or do you? Ooh. Have you ever gambled? I would imagine these um, once or twice. <laughs> I have. I have tried my hand at gambling. Right. Um. I just. I just. Knew, Were you successful? Like, um. I think when I had first, when I had turned twenty one, my dad was like. We're gonna take it to a casino. I was like, Ooh. okay. So he he gave me he gave me a hundred dollars. Um, <laughs> I think I probably left out of there with. I think I won back fifty. I okay. think that's. I think I won back fifty, and then I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to lose my money. Like, and so um, but yeah, I think that was like the only time where I actually like gained. I only won that much, and I think I was just like, all right, I'm done. I'm like, I can't, I can't sit like at a machine and just put my money in there and just watch it disappear like i'm like i can put that money towards something else. so you would be machines and, you would not play like cards or like you know roulette oh, no. or anything i can't i can't do that um because oh. there was this one time um I, because i'm 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 terrible at like card games like uh but it's spades I will like let's get in a game of spades. Like let's go. Like <laughs> let's like let's get teams. It's like I will kick your ass. But um, but like poker, like blackjack, like, yeah, like yeah. that kind of stuff. No, and especially after this one year, I saw my cousin. He mm-hmm. came out for his birthday. Him and his sister and her friend, and it was just me. It was me and him at the time because they had went off somewhere and. I was like, he was like, before we leave, he's like, hey, I'm going to hit this table real quick. I was like, all right. I'm like, I'll just sit here and watch you do whatever. Mm-hmm. I literally sat there and I watched him probably lose a probably a good 2000 within like, oh, damn, not even 30 minutes. I was just like, yep, this is why I do not gamble. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I like to keep my money in my pocket. <laughs> and then after that, it was like, all right, let's go eat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I haven't lost any money, so you know what? Let's go. <laughs> and before you, yeah, use I, was it like, uh, <laughs> I was like, I understand it's your birthday and everything, but I'm like, if you just lost that much, and I'm just like, no, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep the rest of my pocket. So, yet again, sensible, sensible. Mm-hmm. And on that note, <laughs> we we can move to the <laughs> this or that game, which is quite All simple. Right. I'll give you two options, mm-hmm. and you'll tell me which one would you prefer. So okay. let's let's do it. Big party right. or small gathering. Oh, small gathering. All right. Why? Um, I think with the small gathering is because it's lesser it's lesser people mm-hmm. and you're able to be able to, I guess you could say work the room better. Oh I see. to it's, instead of to a big party, it's like it's massive. It's like you don't know everybody there. You're trying to like hang out with whoever, but it's it's this it's just harder mm-hmm. because it's just so many bodies and it's like I don't know where to begin and I'll yeah. and I've done this before where I'll just be like sitting there and I'll just be like looking at everybody else interact and I'm just like I don't I'm know like, any I'll of just you. yeah it's like I'll just stay back here <laughs> I'm like I'll just be on my phone just like yeah just jamming out to the music baby in my drink I'm I'm good but it was yeah. just like a just a few people and it's like and I know you and we can like all like sit together and just like have a conversation bullshit whatever mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. that's my that's my type of tea yeah that's, that's definitely good. my kind of thing nice tv shows or movies i know right Ooh. tough one. Oh wow um i would have that's i'm like in but oh i'm like in between but if i would have to say between the two mm-hmm. i think i would have to say movies okay why um i think with movies because it's just that um you're like in that one moment where mm-hmm. you like for me like when you're in a the theater like yesterday so it's like you're just like in this setting and you're just like in a room with a bunch of other people or you're you're by yourself and you're just like enjoying that experience. And it's like, even if it is for like 90 minutes or like 150, it's just, you're like lost in just this one piece of work that just could just like, you know, sometimes that can consistently flow. And so it just keeps your attention for that time period. And then after that, you're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, like, with TV, you have episodes, and it's, like, you got to catch up on something, or if you, like, and it's, like, hours of, like, you know, binging. I'm, like, I don't have a problem with binging. I'm, like, I can binge, but there's sometimes where it's, like, half your day is gone because Mm -hmm. you've been watching TV, like, you've been watching, like, a certain TV show all day. 
Yeah, and it's like, oh, I'm only on season two and there's eight more seasons before I catch up because I just started Exactly. this one and it's like, <laughs> oh, fuck, That's 16 exactly seasons? it. <laughs> That's And exactly from, it. and from the good old days where, you know, one season was like 22 or 24 episodes It's and what right. are the, all of them are 40 minutes and I'm like, Yes. Jesus Christ, do I start this one? Because that's a beast. Oh. That's how I feel. That's that's literally how I feel about The Walking Dead because I literally stopped in season nine of The Walking Dead, Mm-hmm. and I and I literally do not know how that show ended at all. And I'm just that kind of person where I'm like, I really don't want to have to restart this show just to remember a lot of what went on, just so I can get to that part to where I left off at, so I can understand what's happening. Yeah. So so that's why I'm just like it's so much. It's like it's just so much. Like the um, commitment is much more. Yeah. 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 No, I It's get like you. so much more content with Mm -hmm. TV Mm than it is with the film, and so it's like, okay, it's like I gotta. It's like okay, what time of the day can I start this to where I can end it? Because that's what I kind of do sometimes. Like if I see, like I think I did that with Mister and Miss Smith, then -hmm. like the new show. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like, okay, this is eight episodes. I'm like, it's in between like forty to like an hour. Mm Like it's like, like how soon can I finish this show? And I literally -hmm. finished Yeah. it in one day, but half my day was gone. Exactly. That's I know those days quite well. Yes. Uh, I think I know question uh, answer to this one, but I'll ask it anyway. Tea or coffee? Okay, coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a feeling. What's your What's your to go order? Like, you know, what would you if you are out about out and about? What would you get? Um, if I was out and about, I'm pretty much like, um, I do iced coffee. I don't Nice. really do like hot coffee when I'm out and about. I usually do like the cold. Uh, I do the iced coffee, and we have a place out here. It's called Dutch Bros. And um, they have this one coffee. I do a mixture of two because they do. I can do that, and I love it. It's Mm -hmm. one that's called a Nala Kicker. Um, it's between their drink called an Annihilator and an Irish Kicker. Okay. Um, so their Annihilator is uh, and their Annihilator is a chocolate macadamia nut uh nut breve, and then their um Kicker is um. It's an Irish cream brie. So I do a mixture of that. And it's like, it's like the best thing in the world because it's like half of like half, uh, half and half Irish cream. And then it's like espresso. And then uh, from the Nyla kick, uh, from the Annihilator, it's like, um, it's chocolate macadamia nut syrup. And so it's like, it's, it's still espresso coffee. So it just makes my day like a lot Mm -hmm. more jollier. I I would imagine, even though it to me that doesn't even sound like a coffee anymore. It just sounds like a, some sort of a cocktail, almost I know, like right? a coffee It just cocktail. sounds like it's just like a hodgepodge of a mess, but it's like they do such a good job of like um to me, and I know I'll probably get like like flack for this, but to me, I think they're the better choice than Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think Okay. they're so much better than Starbucks. Like the prices are better, the drink sizes are better, and I think their drinks are better too as well. Um, and uh there's like they're popping up like everywhere out here and it's like there's one behind me there's another one that's like down the street and then there's another one like up the street and they're always packed How was it so called it's just again? like The shop? uh dutch bros Dutch bro. I don't know. We definitely don't have it in the UK. I've never heard of that, yeah but maybe it will come here. And if hopefully if it, if, it might if it does, and if they have those two options, I'll yes think of you and I'll be like, you know what? I need yes to try it. I need to try it. Those are like their main, they're like two of their main ones. So it was like crazy because one of their workers told me about it. They were like, oh yeah, I, because I always be like, what do you like? And they'll be like, oh, well, they're like, I like this. And I was like, okay, then I'll try that. And so it's like, it was one of those drinks that I like literally fell in love with. So yeah, whenever I get a chance and I'm out and about and when they're not busy, <laughs> that's definitely, it's definitely going to be a hot coffee. But when Nice. I'm at home and I'm like, got to work, I, we have a little Keurig downstairs and then I have my little cup and just make my little own coffee, cream, sugar. Yeah, the usual, <laughs> the usual. Fair enough. yeah. Yeah. Money or free time? I know, I know. Oh man. Um, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love money? Um, but I think for me, I think it would be free time because I'm like, I feel like I don't have time anymore. Like how we used to, when we were younger, where it was like, we could just basically do whatever. But now it's like, you got an adult, you got an adult now. Like, Yeah. so it's like, but I'm like, I just want time for me, <laughs> just, Mhm. just, Mm just time to do like whatever I want without having to worry about anything. 
So uh-huh. yeah, I think I would choose free time over money for sure, for sure. Nice, nice. Honesty or other people's feelings? I'm the type of person. I'm like, be honest with me. I, mm-hmm. I, please be honest. I'm like, I'd rather you be honest to me, be honest and lie to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just like, uh, because it's just one of my pet peeves. Because my dad's the same way. He's like. Mm-hmm do not lie don't lie to me because it's like and even with my grandmother too she's the same way like don't lie because it's like you got to tell another lie on top of that lie mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you got to keep lying <laughs> so yeah. it's like just be just be honest and and one of my favorites for me <laughs> with honesty is like still at my old job i remember we were like all excited because this is when civil war you know captain america was getting ready to come out yeah and it's like we always it's like my i always like to talk about movies like everybody who knows me i just (laughs) i love movies yes so we were just like all excited about this movie getting ready to come out and my main concern was it's like oh my we're getting black panther i was like this is gonna be great Mm -hmm. and i just remember my supervisor at the time she like came over and she was like talking to us and she was just like Oh, she's like, and we were just talking about who our favorite characters were. And I was just like, well, automatically I'm like, I'm like, of course, I'm like Iron Man, Captain America, whatever. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm ready for Black Panther. And mm-hmm. and she was just like, oh, she's like, I don't like Black Panther. And I was just like, I'm like, why? I was like, what's your reason? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> and I and I hate Uh-oh. that I'm like this, but it's just me. Um, I, I just asked her, I was like, why? And she's like, oh, she she couldn't like give me like a group a good reason of why like she mm-hmm. was trying to figure out why she couldn't like him and i was just as blunt as i was just blunt as ever and i just said it's just because he's black right i'm like just say it i'm like you don't like him because he's black it's okay i'm like if you're just honest with me, mm-hmm. i'm like i'll be okay and she was just shocked that i said that and i was like no i'm like i'm being serious i'm like just be honest with me i'm like if you're honest with me you can be honest with yourself and i'm like i'll i'll like you i would like you so much more if you were mm-hmm. just honest just that's my my main thing like don't i'm like don't lie i'm like i understand like people's feelings but my main thing is like don't try and like you know try and mm-hmm. say my feelings just be honest yeah. with me that's it honesty is like one of my main things just 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 be honest <laughs> Same. And I, on, on <laughs> with your story, and I, I was going, you know, like, when you were describing it, I was like, is, are we going to, oh, I just don't like black people. <laughs> like, that would be the reason why she doesn't like black Panther. I was like, is she gonna, <laughs> is that gonna be the point of that story? Because damn, that's, yeah. that's brutal. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it really was. And like, my, my coworker at the time, she couldn't help but laugh because it's yeah. like, she knew it was true. Because <laughs> I'm like, looking at my supervisor, I'm like, it's okay. Because this is the same lady who actually was like, can I touch your hair? And I was like, oh, for uh, fuck's sake. That's... <laughs> no. And she literally actually tried to do it one day too. Like, she's like, oh, did you get your hair done? And she like reached forward to go touching mm-hmm. my hair. And I had to like do one of like those like matrix moves to like, <laughs> don't touch my hair. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, I don't know what it is about. Um, that's like my main thing. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm like, I, I, under- it's like, you know, I'm black. I'm like, I grew up in a town that's like small. It's like a lot of, you know, white people. And then it's like, it's just, it just amazes me like how they act when they see someone that they've like, never seen before and i'm just like but I'm like i grew up with you <laughs> i'm like so it's like why why do you mm-hmm. act like this and so um it's just like one of my main pet peeves is like don't touch my hair yeah <laughs> and don't lie to me <laughs> seems reasonable <laughs> yes in 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 another one in um i think this might be one of the um mm-hmm. i think my other thing too is like i i had another pet peeve and it's like people from home it's like don't don't say the n-word around me because i'm like what mm-hmm. gives you the right to do that you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. and it's like and i'm like yes i'm like we're friends or you know me but i'm like don't say that word just because you feel comfortable enough to say it around me mm-hmm. i'm like you shouldn't say it anyway yeah. i'm like i really don't say it because i'm like i'm like yeah i know it's like the words of endearment but i'm like not really mm-hmm. but um i think that that's like one of my main things is like don't just no touching of the hair being honest don't say the n-word around me yeah even with yeah. the a even with the it, like even without the er on the end of it just don't say it <laughs> <laughs> again all reasonable requests all reasonable yes. requests <laughs> like... oh, we're cool we're cool <laughs> I think this could be like a subtitle of this podcast, like, you know, Reasonable Chantal. Just, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Summer or winter? 
out here, it will definitely be winter. Okay. <laughs> because we really don't have a winter like. I was gonna ask, what do you define as winter? Because I don't what's Las Vegas in the winter. Like I cannot imagine that. Yes. Um. So the what the weather out here is completely different than Mm-hmm. um than what it is out in uh, Illinois. So of Mm-hmm. course it's like out in Illinois you have your four seasons. You have your spring, your summer, your fall, your winter. You here you <laughs> you have spring, <laughs> you have summer, <laughs> summer, <laughs> a little bit of fall, <laughs> and Mm-hmm. then a little bit of winter. So basically what it's like right now, our weather is, we're like at 64 degrees right now. Okay. Um, and right now, um, my mom had to go back to Chicago and she's like, there's snow on the ground. Yep. <laughs> so we don't get snow here unless you're like in the mountains. Mm That's -hmm. like the only, that's, and there was like this one time where we did actually get snow hit the ground, but of course it's not going to stick. It's not cold enough for that. Um, but It can get, like, what we tell people, if they're coming out here to visit, do not come in June, do not come in July, do not come in August. Those are our three main hottest months Mm -hmm. Yep. of the year. Mm They -hmm. come, they go, they go higher, and they go as high as 120. And those are the days where they'd be like, hey, if you don't have to go out, stay in the house. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you got to work, <laughs> you still got to go out. So that's like the sucky, that's like the most, that's like the most annoying thing when they have heat advisories, but luckily enough, I work from home now. So that's like the great thing, but they Nice. literally do have heat advisories where they tell you like, Hey, stay in the house. But if you can't stay in the house, like, you know, stay hydrated, make sure you have like, you know, long sleeves or like wear a sunblock, have sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Um, It's because sometimes it's like, it gets so hot out here that the concrete in our sidewalk will buckle. Like, It will push up Yep. the concrete. Yep, And yep, it's yep. like, it's like, it's, it's so nasty out here. Like the dry heat is so, <laughs> it's so bad. It's like, like during like the summers in, in uh, Illinois, at least like during the day it's hot, but during night you get that cool breeze where you can like roll down your windows or open up the doors and like get some air in out here. It's hot every day. It just feels like someone's hot breath is breathing on you. <laughs> like, All day and night, like you start out hot, you you end the night hot. Like the only time it's cool is literally like four or five o'clock in the morning, Mm and then it's like as soon as like six o'clock hits, it's like it's hot. -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That So kind of reminds it's me of most of like Europe in the summer because I'm from I'm originally from Czech Republic and exactly okay. the same June, July, August. The temperatures there nowadays can go mm. yeah. easily around like 30. See, we don't do Fahrenheit. We do Celsius. So around 35, even right. 40 Celsius, which I think I it's a lot in Fahrenheit. I don't know. But like, right I've been to Spain like a few years ago and we mm. and it's and it's even warmer because obviously it's a bit more south, meaning yeah we went in March and it was lovely, like a week in March, but it was like yeah mostly 20 degrees, 22, 25 degrees. Again, Celsius, which is like ideal. Like you're not like you're not baking, <laughs> you're not boiling, but also it's nice and sunny, it's nice and warm. <laughs> yeah So I I I I hear what you mean. I uh, yeah yeah. Some like I I prefer summer, but there is a summer and there's a yeah there's a summer. <laughs> it's like exactly it's and it's it's just mm -hmm. it's terrible out here and it's like i and i and i've done like <laughs> i went to mexico uh last july for my uncle's wedding and i was just like i was like what possessed you guys to do a destination wedding in the middle of like summer because it was so oh it was just it was so nasty it was Mm-hmm. just Yeah. it was it was so bad to Mm-hmm. the point like i would walk out of the room and already it's like condensation on my Yep. glasses it's like i gotta take them off to like walk to like to, to the elevator i remember there was one day i like took two showers in a day because i was sweating so bad dude Mm-hmm. i was just like it was just the worst like time ever to go there in cancun but it was still it was still a good time but it was just like It's like you gotta go during like the winter like season because that right there was definitely like I was I was like are we close to hell because that's what it felt like You need to be built for that weather. You need to, like, if you go to exactly place like that, you need to be used to it. Otherwise, you're just going to die. Like, you're <laughs> right no. that's exactly how I feel because it's like the same thing out here it's just it blows my mind to like watch people just 
like during the summertime, like walking down the street and it will be covered from head mm-hmm. to toe in black. And I'll even have a hoodie on. So it just makes me know. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, you were raised here mm-hmm. because you're used to this weather. I, I'm not. I'm yeah. like, I'm nowhere near like, you know, like I can't even, I can't even think straight when I have on a lot of clothes. Like if it's too hot, it's like <laughs> the layers are like coming off. But like during days where it's like 40 or 50 out and they'll just be like bundled and I'm just, it, or it would be like 50 something degrees like outside and it'll literally be like in like winter coats and jackets and like hoodies and stuff and i'm like this is nice out i'm like what are you doing like mm-hmm. i'll be outside in a pair of sweatpants and a t-shirt and just be like out just happy yeah <laughs> and they'll just be like oh it's cold so it's just you can definitely tell when someone's from like the actual place than not being from that place. <laughs> exactly. And it just yeah, people how people dress up, especially in during mm-hmm. like you know, certain seasons, you know, tell you a lot. Yes. You can tell you a lot about where you're from <laughs> and what they exactly. used to what are used to. That's damn. Mm-hmm. So mo- probably the most important question of all, ninjas mm-hmm. or pirates? I, wow, I wow. know, right? I know that's a ninjas that's a puzzle, right? Pirates. I know, right? It is. Because I like both. Oh mm-hmm. my god. Um, I, I think I would probably say ninjas. I okay. yeah. I yeah yeah. I think I would say ninjas why? for sure for sure. I think. I, okay, I don't know why <laughs> it just popped in my head, and I don't know why I just. I think because when I was a kid, I grew up on this movie called Three Ninjas. <laughs> uh, of course, of course. <laughs> And it was like one of my favorite. It's just like one of my favorite movies. Like watching just like three kids like taking on grown people, yeah, like in their own little way. But they know like the martial arts from like their grandfather, yeah. <laughs> and then of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, come on. Well, duh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like literally just growing. I guess I think at you know like in the I guess like in our time because I feel like me and you are probably around the same age. Yeah. So. And, like, in our time, like, when you think about it, it was, like, our thing was, like, more, I guess you could say, like, martial arts and then, like, pirates, because it's, like, Mm -hmm. we had, like, we had, like I said, Ninja Turtles, we had the Three Ninjas, then it's, like, the Karate Kid, Mm -hmm. and then, um, then we had, um, what is that movie? It's, like, I can see it, um, the other movie, like, Surf Ninjas, um, (laughs) I don't think um, I even heard of that. Oh, yes, it had, um, yes, it's, uh, it had Rob, a young Rob Schneider in it. Ooh. Um and uh Leslie Nielsen and um Ernie Ernie Reyes Jr. who okay. was in um and, and it's like um uh, they are what is it they are coasting through like the you know like the surfer image in like Los Angeles and they are like um attacked by some ninjas because they come in to find out that the that these two brothers are actually royal heirs to like a throne and so they had to like and it's I, a real movie. Uh, yes, this is a real movie. It's what? like from 30 years ago. And um and the tyrannical leader was Le- is Leslie Nielsen. And they had to like literally um they had to like get into like their ninja skills and like take on this man to get their country, you know, to get their throne back. And, okay. it, and it literally deals with like the little brother and he has like a game and it's like literally he's playing this game mm-hmm. that's kind of like a part of the movie too like I can do like like he's like literally like playing the game while the movie is going on and it's just it's just it was like one of them crazy like family comedy movies that deals with like martial arts so I had to look it up and you're right yes. it is literally called yes. Surf Ninjas yes, yes. <laughs> 1993 and yes, yes. it's Rob Schneider, yep. Mm-hmm. Ernie Rice Jr., yep. Mm-hmm. I've never yes. even heard of this movie. Um, yeah. just but now it's on my watch list. Like I need to, I need to watch this because it's Jesus just Christ. Like, yes, it's like one of those movies. I it's crazy how it's like, like some of these movies feel like fever dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were actually real. <laughs> like I've never even heard of. Like I, I haven't seen many. Like, well, I've seen quite a few movies, but I like you know even those yeah. I haven't seen, I at least would have heard of them. But I. This mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure this is the first time in my thirty something years I've heard of yes. just with Leslie Nielsen. I'm like, yes, what? <laughs> exactly. It's like it's literally fever dream, straight fever dream. I'll I'll have to double check if it's streaming someplace here, and if so, like yes. I need to watch this because like you Oscar season or needs need put on hold. <laughs> I'm watching Surf Ninjas because no, yes, that sounds yes like my kind of movie. <laughs> last it's last one. Definitely. Last mm-hmm. one for this uh, is Free Will or Destiny. Ooh. 
Mm-hmm. Free will or destiny. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is, that's a good one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, that's what I'm like, oh my God, destiny. It's like, it's like free will or destiny. Hmm. Well, because with, because with, um, I'm trying to think because like with free will, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's like you have the power to make your own decisions. Correct. Yeah. And then, ooh, or do I want to? I mean, I'm like, they're kind of, I don't, but I guess you could kind of say they're kind. I don't know if you would say they're kind of the same because I mean, like, Destiny is more like a that's like course of events. Um, Destiny is more like you know, like everything you know, no matter what you do, yeah, it's already been predetermined still, that you're gonna do it. Yeah, so you're basically like a puppet that you know plays yeah. like pre-order and like, yeah. you know, gig, like a play. So you don't so really would, have a like you know any action. You, you know, yeah. so the I will, actions you I take. Have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So, so I would have to say free will. Yeah. Okay. It okay. would definitely be free will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. I, yeah, no, I, I like it. I like it. Yeah, most <laughs> people, most people, I think people are like that. We like to think mm-hmm. we are in charge. You know, so we were, I think like we are not, on the, like, we are not comfortable with the idea that no matter what we do, we are always predestined to make this choice. And then right. it kind of takes away from that, like, you know, wait, what's the point then? If I was always mm-hmm. going to do it, like, yeah. wow. No, all right. All right. <laughs> Do you, and last, before we move to the flex part of this mm-hmm. podcast, do you have any controversial opinions? Do you have any hot takes you were willing to share with us? Um, um, I, 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 oh my God. I, I this hate could it be because, anything, honestly. Yeah, because I'm literally, I was sitting here like literally thinking about it. And my mom was like, oh, my little, my mom calls me her little militant. <laughs> because I, I don't know what it is. It's like, I know she loves it because I've gotten to that point where I'm just very, outspoken when it comes to just you know like racial injustice and stuff like that so she's you just don't like, say oh. yeah you so know, she's like, just I... like yeah so she's just like my little militant she's just like uh she's like mm-hmm. you just i'm like i can't help it uh but my main thing is mm-hmm. um i guess because it's like something that we've always dealt like for me i've always dealt with like growing up it's just um how can i put this is don't I guess you could say is don't criticize criticize me for the way I look. Mm -hmm. And then you see like you see these people out here and they're doing like the same things like lip fillers, butt injections, like they're making themselves to like look like a black person, Mm -hmm. but they don't want to. This is this is what I always say. It's like it's like people want to be black but they don't want to be black like they mm-hmm. want like they just want what we have but they don't want like the consequences of what it is to be black on a daily basis mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so i to me it's like oh it's like you want our like you want our talent our skills blah 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 whatever but when it comes to us like me it's like i can literally get stopped for like whatever reason it's because oh you're black oh you're this oh yeah. you're that yeah and and so my main thing is, I guess you could say is if you if you don't want to be black, then don't try and be black. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. OK. I, OK, I'll try to unpack it because I, I think I do. I do get you. I just want to make sure <laughs> like because see, here's the thing, right? My perspective is mm-hmm. European is slightly different in a, like in a sense, right. like, you know, uh, there's a I see what's happening in America or we see what's right. happening in America. And mm-hmm. there's a history of like you know problems, especially in the UK. There's a yeah. history of yeah. like problems here too. But it, I mm-hmm. don't think it's as big as right. you guys have it there, like Americans, right? And mm-hmm. um, so it's like you know, so I know many people like when 2020 happened, and uh, well, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement mm-hmm. came to be, or not came to be, but like you know, became very prominent where everybody knew about it, right? Because right. that was the year mm-hmm. where. It went into mainstream. Like before that, mm-hmm. many people know, but now it, you know, that was the year where it became mainstream, and now right. it seems to be the thing where a lot of people, I don't want to say a rail against, but like you have mm-hmm. issues with, and and I'm like, right, but why? Like I don't right. understand. Like the apparently right. the organiz from what I understand, the organization itself, mm-hmm. there is some like inappropriate things they've done with the money they've been given so they're like D- D- kind D- of D- yeah. shady sh- shady shit yeah yeah so probably not good <laughs> but like, yeah. like the general <laughs> idea i like well 
why would we be not for it? Like, you know, like, you know, why would we be against that mm -hmm. idea? Because like what the that stands for makes sense, right? right? So it just, right. you know, it just, I, I think, and again, me as a white mm -hmm. person, uh, right. I just, you know, I just, you know, I just kind of, how to put this? I don't know whether it's really the life in America where now it seems like race is always first and the person behind it is second. And I'm like, is that the world where many people live? Really? Yeah. Yeah. God <laughs> yeah. damn. Because that seems like yeah, a very sucks, bleak world. Yeah. That seems like it, a very it really bleak. Is. <laughs> but again, it like is. from from my perspective, like again, we mm -hmm. we ho hoped to be past this, right? We've hoped or right. I was always like raised like you know in that environment like oh used to be used to be shit now it's better we are kind of mm -hmm. past this and now it seems like we're not so I'm like mm -hmm. oh this is fascinating this is very fascinating yeah. because like you know like you know like uh like when you said about a hair like you know yeah don't touch people like anybody's hair just just don't yeah do it. like don't like don't touch me it's like in my main thing too is that I always got to it's like before i because this is like this is my hair it's like mm -hmm. before i actually locked it up mm -hmm. um i used to do braids i used to i used to have fake hair and so all my friends would be like you know they would just be like oh that's a weed that's a weed blah 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 and i'm just like i'm like why does it matter what my hair is i'm like mm -hmm. it's my hair mm -hmm. i'm like it's it's like into us for like women like for like for me it's like it's like our it's like basically our crown like our hair is yes. our crown like we love our hair so mm -hmm. it's just it's so it's just for like my friends just to be like oh like it's not real but then <laughs> i had this one time i had like my friends uh my friend's parents like her mom and her stepfather mm -hmm. i was at their son's house because it was like his kid's birthday or whatever mm -hmm. and i don't know where my friend was at but i was talking to another friend in their kitchen and i was just like standing there with my arms crossed and um my hair at the time was dyed like the ends were dyed blue and okay. um they just walked up to me and they were literally like they literally walked up to me like I was on display at like a zoo or something and was just touching my hair and just in my space like oh so like how do you color your hair like mm -hmm. how do you do this like uh I do it the same way you dye your hair like mm -hmm. I do the same thing like you do to wash your hair I'm like you don't have to walk up to me and have to touch me mm -hmm. to ask me these questions like that's yeah. another thing that like they just I just feel like people think they have like that um I I white people feel like they have the privilege of like touching other mm -hmm. people and it's like no mm -hmm. you don't it's like get out of my space like it's like you wouldn't like it if someone touched you or touched yeah. your hair. Like, it's like it's definitely one of the main things. It's like if you if we just met, don't touch me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, you know what this reminds me of? <laughs> it's a not a great movie, but I mm -hmm. think they displayed that exact sentiment quite well. You people mm -hmm. from last year, and I think I you see yeah. this. I remember you. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I read your review and yeah. I remember your rating as well. Like again, it's not the greatest of movies, but I think they displayed no. quite well one sentiment I come across quite frequently, mm -hmm. where especially older white people, right? They mm -hmm. don't want to be racist, and they know, mm -hmm. how, like you know, then they know or they are aware of the hist history, right? Right. So they are trying so hard to to be. Not racist, <laughs> where they don't exactly, come across right. really fucking creepy, very fucking you know, like <laughs> patronizing, and where I'm, uh, where like even the movie kind of makes the point where, okay, mm -hmm. not everybody who does this shit, right, and it's it is, right. it's yeah. they, and they're not necessarily from a mean place or from patronizing oh. place. It comes across mm -hmm. like that because they just they are so afraid of being labeled racist or like you know uncultured or you know like. So they want to be like, oh, I actually did my studies. I I've done my reading. Hey, I know the history. Right, right, right. So it's like you know, oh, I'm, <laughs> so they want to they want to show you, hey, I'm your, uh, you know, I'm your friend. I'm your, uh, right. what is it like? Uh, I'm a soldier, you know, like uh, like I'm I'm fighting yeah. a good fight with you, and it's just like, can we just take it like you know, can we take a step or two back <laughs> and be like, yeah, it's just like just bring it down a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? So like, so I that's the thing, right? So I feel like yeah. we need to differentiate with the place of malice and a place mm -hmm. of what is just pure ignorance where it's you know people right. some people definitely um, you will probably tell me 
you okay, mm-hmm. m- must have had m- many experiences. I hope not many, but probably some experiences where you've come across, you know, people, you know, where they would come from place of like malice or bad intent about this shit. Oh, and yeah. I would, um, yeah. Yes. Uh, there's like, uh, speaking of, it was just crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, we had went to New York. <laughs> Mm. um we went to new york i think it was 2018 okay and um we were just walking we were walking around we were headed towards the um the uh, memorial for uh 911 we were at mm-hmm. we were at the world trade centers yeah. we were just getting there and i had my grandmother um mm-hmm. i had her on my arm mm-hmm. uh, my mom was kind of ahead of us just a little bit and my mm-hmm. dad was ahead of her just a little bit and I, it was just crazy because it was like, I clocked this guy, like oh, coming towards my mother. Like, it was just weird. It was just like, we're just walking. And I just saw this guy, like literally just come towards my mom. And then all of a sudden he just looked up at her and he just called it an N word just out of the blue. I was just like, we were all just like confused. I was just like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. And my mom was even confused. She was just like enjoying her drink <laughs> and this random guy just came out to her and just called her the n-word it was like we were having the best (laughs) exactly we were having like the best day until that point it was just like where the fuck did this guy come from and um and it was just like it kind of like threw me off my Mm -hmm. dad was just like what did that guy just say this mm-hmm. one guy was like said something to him and my mom was just like oh don't worry about it and i just remember just yelling god bless you as he like walked by because it, it you could tell there was something wrong with that guy like mm-hmm. he there was just like he wasn't in his right mind but still it was just the fact that he literally just walked up to a random person and just and my mom and just said the end word. it the was fuck? nuts it was so crazy. I was like, I've never experienced that. Be- I'm like, I have experienced racism, but, but like, just blatantly just walking up to somebody. Like, in your face. That. I'm like, like, yeah, I'm like, the fuck? It's like, I don't even know you. Like, I don't even know you from a can of paint. And you're just, yeah, you're a, like, okay. Like, I was happy when he just kept walking and it didn't, like, get worse because it could have got mm-hmm. worse. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, the guns being available to all all people there, you know, that makes right. things dangerous. So, New York, totally. Jesus, New York in 2018. Yes. Yeah, it was like, like the first, like, that was crazy because it was like everybody that we met were like so cool. And then mm-hmm. Just one guy. <laughs> like if he, had he told me this was New York in 1980, I would be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it almost seems like impossible. Like this is like in 2018 New York. I'm like, what the fuck? That's like six years ago. <laughs> exactly it was it was nuts i was just like the fuck is going on here (laughs) jesus christ all right yeah let's let's not be like that guy okay yeah i feel like yeah let's not not that's not a hot take (laughs) this is not a hot take let's not be like that guy that's just it's just like a normal normal opinion like yeah yeah (laughs) i know (laughs) oh my fucking god all right any (laughs) anything any other opinions you would like to you would like to express before we move on um, I will just give like a funny little food oh, hot really? take. Pineapples belong on pizza. <laughs> I'll say yes. yes. It's always a thing. People will be like, I don't want pineapple. No, pineapple belongs on a pizza. Like I, I, it's always a debate. Like it's, it's crazy. Even on Facebook, like I have friends that be like, pineapple does not. No, pineapple mm-hmm. belongs on a pizza. Like sweet and savory. You'll thank me later. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll say. Okay. Gotta try it once. <laughs> Exactly. See, exactly. I had a debate about this. Was it with Mike or somebody already on this podcast? And I'll say the same mm-hmm. thing. Before I met my <laughs> girlfriend, my current girlfriend, I was like yeah. not convinced. And then she <laughs> really likes pineapple on pizza. However, she mm-hmm. doesn't eat ham because here it's like ham and pineapple, right? Yeah. Can't, so she yeah, doesn't eat bacon and ham. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so she doesn't eat ham or pork. So she would okay. always swap it for like a beef. Right, so like a minced, mm-hmm. always like not not chunks of beef, but like minced beef, right? And like every time I would steal her slice, I'm like, mm-hmm. this shit actually is pretty good. Like you know, before yeah. that I would be like pineapple on pizza, it's kind of weird, but like now right. I tasted it, I'm like, it kind of works actually. Yeah, there, yes, it's so good. No, so no, I do agree with that. Like you know, pineapple if you want to have it, mm-hmm. and again. You're not hurting anybody, right? So if sure, you right. wanna have if you wanna have <laughs> pineapple on your pizza, you can have mm-hmm. two pineapples on your pizza. Like for all I care. Like, you know, have right. all the pineapple and no pizza. 
<laughs> like you know, have all <laughs> just yeah. No, it's, yes. it's wait. So, is that your favorite favorite kind of pizza? Pineapple with something, or yes, we um, to go pizza. My go to pizza would have to be. I'm. I'm. A, I just. I love. Um. I love a good sausage and uh mushroom pizza. Nice, nice, classic. And sometimes with um with the uh, black olives on there too. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. So I I and there's sometimes it's like with Pizza Hut they have like their little meat lovers where it's like all meat. But yeah. And yeah. also I do like a supreme where it's like the vegetables and like you know all the meats as well. But yeah, those are usually my go tos. It's like the the Italian sausage, mushroom, and black olives. Sounds good. That sounds yes. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah. So with that, we can move to the flex part of this podcast where we actually talk some movies because, you know, we're both love movies. So Chantal, yes. what is the last new movie you would rate five out of five? And for the purposes of this podcast, anything 2020s is considered new movie? Well, yesterday I just saw Dune part two. Nice. And, um, yeah, I would have to say I did give it a five. It. <clears throat> Uh, it was so so good and i didn't even get to see the first one in theaters i watched mm-hmm. it at home and so i was kind of like disappointed but i definitely was not disappointed with seeing it this time in theaters it was just and it's like i hate to be that person i <laughs> i hate to be that that person but it's like it is like i would consider it a cinematic uh masterpiece like it yeah it was definitely one of those movies where it like grabs a hold of you like right mm-hmm. at the beginning and it mm-hmm. just like just takes you like on this long ass ride but it's just like a really fun entertaining mm-hmm. ride um mm-hmm. because i really didn't i didn't get into the first one so much like i had to get i had to like watch it a second time to actually okay. like the follow through and i was like okay i'm like this movie is actually pretty good but then mm-hmm. like seeing the second one i was just like okay this one may top that first one so it's mm-hmm. just like um everybody was amazing in it like mm-hmm. the the action was great. I think there was like more, it was like just I think it's because we were getting more into like the meat of the, like, you know, the story Yeah. compared to like the first one. It was just, uh-huh. and you were getting like more like characters and stuff, but it was just, it's just I guess, I don't know. I guess it was just it was really good. Like, mm-hmm. I was even surprised that I took my mom and my mom actually enjoyed it. Okay. And, um, because those kind of movies, those kind of movies are like not really like her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, just for her to be like, she liked it, and she was the one who actually was like, "Hey, let's go see this." I was like, "Okay," I was like all happy because she actually said it, and I didn't have to like, it, like be like, "Hey, I'll pay for you to go see this movie. Like, come mm-hmm. with me." <laughs> so it's kind of nice for her to be like, "Hey, let's go see it together." I was like, "Perfect." So just being able to like see that, and then just to watch Timothy Chalamet just. Mm-hmm, do his mm-hmm. thing on the screen like he just keeps getting better and better same thing with zendaya and like austin butler is just ugh, he was just he is like he's not elvis anymore people like yeah, he, yeah. he's like really he's another one who's like captivating in this as well like mm-hmm. he was just so sinister i just wanted more of him i just wish they would have just just had him like throughout the whole entire film like it just like like, it took forever for him to like show up and when he did it was like totally worth it like the movie is definitely worth it i would Mm -hmm. i would totally go see it again for sure for sure and i'm like i hope they give us that doom messiah because especially the way it ended i'm like i i need that last piece yeah yeah (laughs) it's like totally i need that last one no yeah we are seeing it tomorrow like my girlfriend and i we are going to see it tomorrow so i cannot wait i've already had a discussion yes. today with shane and adam who both seen it so and obviously shane seen it on and in new york there's like the largest imax screen in america or in the world or second in the world something like that so wow oh apparently it wasn't it's kind of like that's where he saw oppenheimer as well and he said okay worth it for both movies to see it on like I proper big IMAX screen. Yeah, it's totally. It was definitely worth it. Like, um, yeah, because Oppenheimer was amazing, Mm -hmm. like on screen, Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. just like, and then the same thing with uh, Dune too. It's like you have to see it on a big screen to get that experience. Is definitely you have to see it on the big screen, and um, and in this theater that we were in, they do like a D box where it's like that 4D experience where you yeah, feel yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to do that first <laughs> until I saw the pricing of the tickets. I was like forty dollars for two people. I was like, 
I think it was over forty dollars for two people just Damn. to do the D box. And I was like, I'm like, no, I'm like, I still get the big screen. It's still gonna be loud. I'm like, yeah. let me just get my regular degular tickets, and it was twenty dollars lesser. I was happier with that. Nice. Um, but um, yeah, it was like you could still feel like the vibrations from the seats behind mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just like everything was just so loud and just mass it was just everything was like on a grander scale this time around and it, yeah it was i hope you guys enjoy it when you see it i really do i cannot wait i let me tell you that speaking of actually <laughs> that a quick question do you have imax mm-hmm. there in las vegas yes we do we oh. actually have a few theaters here that do have imax um which is really crazy before the i <laughs> what's this funny to me because like before i these two movies that i saw in imax And the last movie I saw in IMAX was It Part One. Nice. And that was, like, I was like, I don't know what possessed us to do this, but I think it's because our tickets were free and mm-hmm. we only had to just pay that little bit of whatever that little surcharge was for IMAX, which wasn't even nothing. And yeah. we ended up seeing it and I was just like, this shit's intense. <laughs> but that, it was so great to see the first one mm-hmm. in IMAX because of how, like, that one to me was, like, the scariest one. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like, I love part two, but I think it's it's a lot harder to scare adults than it is kids. Yeah. Because kids, like, being scared, that, to me, that was genuine. Like, they, like, acted their asses off that movie, and I, like, fell in love with it. And then the second part, I'm like, you do have some good actors, but it was just them trying to act scared. It just kind of took me out of it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice. But yeah, we have maybe like um it's not that many. I think there's probably like four. They're mm-hmm. about so the XD movie theaters are about the same as IMAX. So yeah. um if you can't get to an IMAX, you can get to an XD theater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just we're is it's about the same. It's about the same. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, like honestly, like like we actually have four dx four DX, it's called here. And okay, we, yeah. yeah, we have it here as well. I've never actually, mm-hmm. I've never been tempted to go. Yeah. I would love to go to IMAX, but yeah, the nearest one is like two and a half hours uh, drive from Ooh, me. Wow. It's, yeah, it, it's kind of a commitment if you want to see a movie. Yeah. It's like, fi- <laughs> you know, pretty much like five hours on the road. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. uh, yeah, I know because proper, like there's like, actually wait, there's like four proper IMAXs now in Scotland, but all of mm-hmm. them are at least like, you know, two hours away. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That and there's like nuts. these like uh, full like a uh, full <laughs> IMAXs where it's like IMAX mm-hmm. enough. There's like a between like a normal screen or normal like cinema and IMAX. There's like a middle tier and there's like a uh, like a false IMAX and there's like some mm-hmm. of them popping up. But I would love to experience like a proper IMAX, especially for a movie like mm-hmm. like Oppenheimer or like Dune 2. Like yes. yes, yes. No, I cannot wait. I'm yes, seeing definitely it worth it. Okay. Honestly, like everybody's okay. raving about it. Yeah. And you know yes. Zendaya, like Zendaya, just yes, she she's yeah. just she's great. She yeah, she's like she's definitely showing that she can like she's like she can act. Like it's like we see it, but it's like just seeing her in more and more stuff to be able to for her to like grow. Yeah, and especially like even if she doesn't have any words, just like her expressions are like enough. Like mm-hmm. the same thing with like Rebecca Ferguson. She like oh, yes. she really doesn't have to like she doesn't have to have a lot of words either. Like she can just like hold the camera with just a look, and you're mm-hmm. just like. Oh, she's mm-hmm. great. Like <laughs> she was like great. Like not taking this like, you know, like everybody was great. I just wish there was more of Florence Pugh, but like of course, like if we do get Doom Messiah, we will get more of her. Yes. So I'm like yes. even she was great too. I just it's like, you know, it's like some characters like you just want to see more of them, but it's like we just have to be patient. So it's like if we do get that last part, we will get more of those characters. And I cannot again. I cannot wait for th- tomorrow, and yes. I'll probably know I'm gonna love it. So I cannot wait for the Messiah already. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So, what was the last teen movie you rate? You would rate five out of five. Anything between 2003 and 2019? Ooh, um, I think this is the one that I was like, I was like in the mixture of because it's like so many movies, and um, I think. With this one, mm-hmm. I um I did this one like really fast last night. I was just like, oh, let me find a movie really quick. <laughs> um, but honestly, I think for this one, if it's like two thousand like three to like two thousand nineteen, right? Two thousand nineteen, two thousand yeah. Um, 
of course, like I like you said, and like I am, I love my animated movies. Um, and this one is like literally one of my favorites. It mm -hmm. would be The Incredibles. Oh, great choice. That's a great choice. The yes, The Incredibles. I like as soon as I saw it, it was just like one of those movies you just kind of like fall in love with because mm -hmm. it wasn't like modern, mm -hmm. which I loved about it. It was like I guess you could say it was kind of like set like in the 50s, 60s. Yeah. And so it's just like it's like the family of superheroes and like having to live in like, you know, silence and like live incognito and just like the dad just didn't want to live like that because he wanted that life again of being like larger than life. And he's yep. just like, you know, he's living a normal life with his wife and his superhero, you know, like his super kids, which they don't really like know, like the youngest one is a super, but still it's just them trying to live that normal day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're superheroes. And yes. he just wants to, he wants to, he wants that feeling again of meaning something to somebody being that hope and just, you know being a hero to be able to like save the day and, mm -hmm. like, and when they get that chance to save the day it's like for all the wrong reasons and it's like you just see like you just see like you're like an american family just coming together to save the world with like mm -hmm. super like with superpowers and it was just it was just like a fun you know it was just like one of those fun movies like for anybody to love and of course like my favorite part <laughs> is with frozen and his wife <laughs> when she's asking him where's my super suit <laughs> <laughs> that is still will go down as like one of my favorite scenes in a movie it's just like she's like i am your wife i'm the greater good that you're ever gonna get it's just <laughs> like it's the greatest thing ever that whole scene alone just it like made the movie for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it was samuel L. jackson amazing. you know samuel L. jackson voicing for you know that's you know yes. he's one of the goats he's just <laughs> definitely like It's this might sound weird, but ever since I've loved him, ever since I saw him in Jurassic Park, like oh, yes. <laughs> I know it's like I know it's not one of those movies you'll see like oh really this movie I'm like yeah because mm -hmm. he was the only one who knew how to work them them computers he was the cool guy yes. for me he was the cool guy <laughs> yes. and he was like damn this he can really actually he knows his, his shit <laughs> like he like he knows his shit like you know he was very cool yes. I remember like seeing this movie like I was like eight or nine I was like. Who is this cool guy with the computer? Like, I really want to be like him. <laughs> just so... yeah, just hold on to your butts, like just exactly. Like... Yes, yes, <laughs> so great and incredible. Yes. Such a great movie, and for mm. me, the sequels also. Like, I feel like many yes. people don't don't talk about a sequel. Like, I don't know yeah. why. I don't think it's, I like was it was as well received as as the original. Yeah. But I I honestly feel like for me it. Mm -hmm. Play very well. I've seen it in a cinema and it played very well in a cinema. I haven't rewatched yeah. it, but I really, really enjoyed the sequel too. And of course, we so all fell I. in love yeah. with Elastigirl, like you know, for reasons. Of they course, animate them. Of... They, yes. they animate them very well. <laughs> What can I say? <laughs> yeah, it's like very great. It's like I just loved it. Was just one of them. I I get. I don't know why. It's like I kind of want to say it's like a feel. It to me, it was a feel good movie. You just yes. went to the movie theater and you just came out feeling good. Just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it just it was like just it was a lot of fun. And then of course it's like some of like the funny in the windows in there. And then and then I, of course I love the whole scene with Dash and like the teacher when he was just like coincidence. I think not. And it's just like they're just looking at him like this man is crazy. And he's like I'm not crazy. Like this kid did it. He's like I can't prove mm -hmm. it, but it's like I'm gonna try and prove it. It's just it's just like a lot of just fun stuff in it. It's in like the no capes with Edna Mo. Just <laughs> yeah. It just I just love it because she's like literally telling him no capes, and I love that they like go back to it at the end. But um oh my god, what was his name? Oh my god. Um, the bad guy. What was his oh, name? Oh, what's his name? Oh, oh my god. Um, he was a last. The he was a he was a. Oh my god, what was his name? That's gonna drive me nuts. Oh, he was incredible boy, but then he be. Who did he become after he, that? Oh. Oh my god. Shit. Syndrome. Syndrome. Yes. Is. Syndrome. Yeah, it's like I love that whole scene when they go back to syndrome with the Kate and it gets caught in the engine. Yeah. It's a. It's like. It's just, it was just, yeah, it's just one of those feel good movies. It's, I just, it's a great movie. I can watch it all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> and not get bored at all. It's a great movie. And also, you know, 2004, right? Mm -hmm. This was at the time where superhero movies were not like all, all of them were not necessarily great. Like we've had like Spider Man, Spider Man 2, and we had right. some of the X Men movies, X Men, X Men mm -hmm. 2. 
But right. we've also gotten Daredevil. You know, yes. Electra was just around the corner. So, mm -hmm. you know, this was one of those <laughs> where, hey, superhero movies can be really fucking awesome. Even mm -hmm. animated. Like, even the kiddies movies. Like, you know, because, you know, back yeah. in 2004, still... Oh, it's animated. That's for kids. You know, that's not right. a that's not a movie. That's for kids. Now right. we we obviously understand. No, animation is cinema. It's film. Yes, yes, it is film, and it's <laughs> as Guillermo del Toro said. You know, said last year. Mm -hmm. You know, accepting the Oscar for Pinocchio, animation is cinema. And if Guillermo del Toro, Toro says that, who am I to argue I, with him? I, 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 I'm a, I'm I gotta agree. I totally agree because it's like. I'm like, if they're telling a story, you got the characters, you're developing, it's it's a movie. Like, it's a mm -hmm. movie. It doesn't matter if it's live action or not. I'm like, if you're telling a story and people can get into it, you have a movie. <laughs> and Pinocchio, by the way, his Pinocchio, the stop motion is so beautiful. And the story, the story, like, we've seen Pinocchio done so many times now. Like, yes. in that year, there was like two or three other Pinocchio versions. And yeah. that was, was, then this one was just head and shoulders above and beyond, like, no. And it was a Disney Pinocchio in the same year. It was a fucking exactly. Disney. Exactly. And that's, and that's what's crazy is that I haven't even watched the Pinocchio or the Disney version. I you don't only have watched to. Del Toro and it's like, and I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see Del Toro's. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to see his because, like, I loved Pam. I love Pan's Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. I loved, um, what was the other one that he did? He that did Hellboy. Similar. Thank you. Um, and I just like, I kind of like fell in love with mm -hmm. like his work anyway because I, I think he's a phenomenal director. Yeah. So just to be able to see this, I was just like, and it was a little bit darker to compare to what we are used to to Pinocchio yes. because when I first saw it, when I first started it, I was like, I was like, oh my god, I was like, this is, I was like, this is like really dark. I'm like, this and is sad. what the Pinocchio is thinking. And yes, this is like, I'm like, this is heartbreaking. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is not the Pinocchio I was thinking of. But it was such a good movie though, and it was so beautifully made. So yes. it's like I'm like I'm like I can't I can't even watch the Disney version with Tom <laughs> Hanks. Like I love Tom Hanks, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. I don't want to see him as Geppetto. <laughs> it was it was a weird choice. I'll say I'll say <laughs> yeah. it. The, this the Disney version is war for Cynthia Rivo. Is there as a uh, the uh, fairy godmother? Like some sort of, you know, the fairy of the story. Mm -hmm. And obviously okay. she, she's great. So mm -hmm. she's, it's, that's worth, even though she's only there for like five minutes. And yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt as, you know, Jiminy Cricket. He, he's, he he's actually, oh yeah, yeah he's <laughs> Jiminy Cricket in that. Because oh, the, I didn't Gil even know that. <laughs> yeah, Guillermo del Tor Toro has uh, Ewan McGregor, right, as Jiminy. And mm -hmm. he nailed yeah. it. But yeah. the Disney version has Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And also was quite good. Like, like it's not a great movie, but it's an okay movie. Like, it's yeah. I was like, like that's an interesting choice. <laughs> you don't want to. You're not gonna want to kill yourself. Like, you know, watching oh. it. <laughs> like, you you could do much worse. With, like, hour and a half. Right, right, time. right. <laughs> but like, no, it's the Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio is just head and shoulders, way gotcha. way above that. So yeah. no, but incredible. Totally got it. Excellent, excellent choice. Excellent choice. Thank you. <laughs> so, what was the last adult movie you would rate five out of five? So, anything in between two thousand two and nineteen seventy five. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go recent again with my okay. choice because I recently just watched this movie the other day and I totally forgot like how um like how really good this film was. It's uh mm -hmm. Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Nice. Um. I literally, it was just, it was, it came on one day and I was just like, oh, I'm like, I don't have nothing else to do. And I'm like, I haven't seen this movie in a minute. So I was like, let me just rewatch it. And I remember the first time I saw it, it was at the theater because it was just, um, of course, who's not a fan of Tom Cruise or Steven Spielberg? I mean, come on. So, but it, to me at that time, because of course it's like 2002 and mm -hmm. you're seeing a movie that's like in the future and you're just like, oh like this is what the future is gonna look you know you're just thinking like oh this is how the world's gonna be like pre-crime like they're gonna stop the crime before it happens like it's yep. just, it was just like the idea was like really interesting because it's like hmm, it's like how could you stop crime before it happens <laughs> so in just to see like tom cruise like try and find a way like how can i get myself out of this without you know without killing this person that they're saying that i'm going to kill and yeah it's like oh i need the precog and samantha morton was like so good as agatha like mm -hmm. i i was like i think that was i don't i'm trying to remember if that was the first movie i saw her in but i think that was the first movie i saw her where i really noticed her mm -hmm. 
And it was just like, even though she wasn't in it too, too much, but it was kind of like her character had like a main part in it. Mm -hmm. And it was just the way she was able to like hold the screen and just you like felt like every expression that she was like going through. And just, of course, Tom Cruise, without saying the action hero that he is, just yeah. doing what he does best and um, Steven Spielberg doing what he does best with directing. And it's just. I just like the whole look of like the darkness of it and just mm -hmm. like it just it wasn't like a happy go lucky movie. It was literally one of the movies like, hey, we're trying to stop crime, but how can we stop crime for a system that is still flawed? Mm -hmm. And it kind of ties, and, bit, you know, into the free will or destiny kind of question, isn't it? Like, you know, right. is it actually reliable? Because does it mean like, you know, if we stop crime, yes. doesn't mean we are just all, you know, actors, players, puppets, you know, whatever you want to call us. Exactly. And right. we're always going to do it. Or if you know you're going to commit something, you know, do you have the power to stop it? Stop yourself or, you know. Exactly. It's like, can you change, you know, can you change what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, like before it happens, it's like either way, it's like you're going to get some kind of outcome. But mm -hmm. like you said, you can always change that outcome when yeah. you have that free will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a great one. I'm due for a rewatch for that. Like I've seen it once long, 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 <laughs> long time ago. Yeah. So I, I need to, that probably needs to be in my collection as well. I'm building up like a Blu-ray 4K collection of movies. So that definitely yeah. should be there. Like Spielberg, <laughs> Cruise, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what what else? Still, and it still sound, and it still looks good on mm -hmm. TV, even after being like ten. Yeah, ten. No, going on twenty years. Yeah, it's so crazy. Over twenty years. About it. Over yeah, 20 it's years been now. twenty years. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been twenty years now, and it's just like, and it still looks good, and it still holds up at the. And that's what I love about like with like certain movies, like you can you can still watch it, and mm -hmm. you still get like that same feeling that you got from watching it the first time. And that's how I feel with that movie too, with Minority Report, because it. It was so good. And then, of course, it's like you got Colin Farrell is like who's in it, who's amazing in it as well yep. for him, because it's like when I saw him before, it was American Outlaws. And I literally thought dude was American, like mm -hmm. literally thought he was American until I he like did an interview. And I'm like, oh, he's Irish. I'm like, yep. okay. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm like, and he's such an amazing actor. So for him to like and I guess you can kind of say it was kind of like his second kind of like big role, like mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So for it to see him go toe to toe with Tom Cruise, I was just like, yeah, I'm like, I was sold. It was yeah. it was really good. No, it, it definitely is... a good film. It is a great one. Speaking of, by the way, speaking of age, ages. So mm -hmm. you've picked Incredibles before. That's also yes. gonna turn twenty this year. Sp you know, alongside Spider-Man two. You know, with Toby. Crazy. Both. Yeah. It's imagine so two thousand. You know, two thousand four. Twenty years ago. Yeah. Just you know, do you feel Nuts. old yet? I I feel old. You know, like I'm not that old. You're not that old, but I feel old. <laughs> I, I don't know, know about you. I, I don't know about you. I feel old. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I feel old. Like, when I, like, saw that and I was like, what? I'm like, 20 years old? I was like, are yeah. you serious? It's yeah. like, where does the time go? I'm like, I just, it's just crazy to me because this is like, I think it was some other movie, too, that came on. And I was like, how old is this movie again? And I'm like, wait, how old? I think it was The Help. Yeah, it was The Help. My mom was watching it the other night. And I was like, how old is this movie? And she was like, it's 2010 or 2011. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it's over 10 years old. To me, I'm like, I feel like I was just there. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy when you think about like certain things, like mm -hmm. it's like, you feel like you were just in that moment. And then it's just like, time just flies by and you're like, wait, that's 20 years ago. Wait, that's 30 years ago. Like, yep. it's just, just like how like last year, Jurassic Park, that was 30 years ago. I was like, yep. What the fuck? <laughs> like, What is going on? It's just it's just crazy when you start like looking at like the time of like movies and then like you start thinking about oh my god I was this old when I saw this movie and it's like I'm this age now and I'm like yep yep it's just it's mind boggling <laughs> it time just time is a bitch just I'll say it that really is it really Sp is speaking of old what is the last <laughs> old movie you would rate five out of five which <laughs> 1974 and older. Okay, so I am definitely going to go way back. Um, I okay. would have to say it's A Wonderful World with Jimmy Stewart. I of literally course. watched it over the holidays. Like, Classic. Um, because, like, my mom, she she's uh, she's like a TCM fanatic. Uh, the Turner mm -hmm. Classics movies. Yeah. Like, she, 
Like she can like put that on and she'll like watch it every day. Like mm-hmm. she'll go to sleep to it. Like she's literally named after Lana Turner. So nice. I think that's actually pretty cool. Like she was named after like uh, my grandmother's like favorite actress. So I was like, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like my love for like classics and stuff like that, like Mildred Pierce and um, what happened to Baby Jane and like the Bad Seed and it's because of her. Mm-hmm. Um, but the last movie that I did watch, it was a wonderful life. Um, it, mm-hmm. I just like I fell in love with Jimmy Stewart. Like he's such an amazing actor, mm-hmm. and just watching him, just like you know, this man literally wanted to like off himself. Like he just didn't feel like he had any kind of reason to live, you know. Yeah. And then just the like it, you know, it's literally kind of like the same thing. Is like um, I guess you could say it's like the Christmas story. Like you're going through like different parts of your life because that's mm-hmm. literally what it is. And just watching him just see himself, like, just seeing, like, what life would be without him and, like, Mm -hmm. how he's just, like, he wants to go back and he just wants to be able to live his life the way, you know, like, just he wants that life back because it's, like, he's seeing a life and it's not the life that he he already had, but it was, like, all he was, like, all so much worse. Yep, yep. And so he was just like, okay, so my life isn't as bad as I thought it was. So it's like, bring me back. I'm like, I just want my life back, you know? And also he and made so... it better for everybody else. Like he was yes. a big part of the community, you know? <laughs> yes. He underestimated, he underestimated. And I feel like that's, mm-hmm. that's a great and like feel good message of that movie, isn't it? It's just you yeah. underestimate and many times you forget how many lives you influence. You change. You know, yeah. yes. You know, either directly or indirectly. Like, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's not, uh, you know, as noticeable but it's there and right. it's especially you know life is one you know like that movie it's mm-hmm. definitely one of those like i will you know uh, it's it's american christmas classic it's not in yes. europe it's not popular right so right. i had to I, when i started to kind of on, you know this like cinephile journey like 15 20 years ago i was like all right mm-hmm. this is this is ranked quite you know up there when it comes to any right. kind of <clears throat> excuse me any kind of ranking systems so i mm. had to watch it and i was like oh yeah i see it why and i cannot yeah. say it for every single christmas classic i'll say like i recently like a year ago i watched for mm. the first time the christmas story or a christmas story and really? i was like and i was like <laughs> this was fine i i guess you would have to be it's one of those you have to grow up with it and you have to be there yes. <laughs> because like i i was so ready to fall in love with that movie and i'm like this was totally different than i would expect and was expecting and i was just mm-hmm. this is just weird movie it's a very weird movie to me like yeah, i love home alone like, like yes know. and a christmas story like in this household is like it's like a staple <laughs> it's mm-hmm. literally a staple yeah. especially if you grew up watching it it's definitely like a staple in the house yeah so especially like here on like christmas eve until christmas tbs they do like a 24-hour marathon where they just play it back to back yeah so it's like so it's like i literally uh i will watch it back to back like it's just it's just like one of those (laughs) it's like just one of those other feel-good christmas movies as well Mm -hmm. and then it's like they did you know like they did the second half of christmas story story i think it was or whatever wasn't it like a couple of years ago now like it's yeah like a lot of those like very late sequels Yes, it was like a very late sequel where Ralphie wanted to keep up the tradition that his dad did. And mm-hmm. it was just, I, I couldn't get into it. I was like so out of it. it. It it just didn't have like that same like holiday spirit like as the first original yeah. did. Because I'm yeah. like, it's over like, it's like almost 40 something years ago, you know yep. what I mean? And you're like literally doing something that's been like, <laughs> that has not been touched until now. And mm-hmm. it just didn't have that same feeling as the original like it wasn't like funny like that slapstick kind of funny like the first one like it just it just didn't seem it just seemed off i get like it it just didn't fit like it Mm -hmm. didn't fit at all like they didn't even have to make another one like they could have just left it at that and just left Mm -hmm. it alone yeah no i like i definitely you know what i'll try it again i'll now i know (laughs) what i'm getting into with a christmas you know christmas story i need to rewatch it at some point and give it another shot maybe i've missed something because it it happens i miss stuff all (laughs) the time it does yeah and but no like you know it's a wonderful life it's definitely one of those like Mm -hmm. it crosses boundaries crosses like you know nations doesn't matter like you know like it it hits me like and i would i would i've rewatched it a couple of times you know throughout christmas Mm-hmm. it's not on my like you know 
Home Alone, I need to watch every single Christmas because that's that's right. like same. that's where I grew up on. And even in yeah, same, same, same. <laughs> even in Czech Republic, that just crossed you know crossed the you know uh, you know like borders. That just mm -hmm. you know that was on the TV you know first and second one all the time like yes. throughout the Christmas. Right. So just. <laughs> Yeah, so I always rewatch totally that. It's it. just my that's just my happy place, Home Alone. Same. But speaking of decades, so I totally get it. Mm -hmm. nice. Now, speaking of decades, what is what would you say is your favorite decade for movies? So I would have to say it would be it would have to be the nineties. Uh, for me, it would have to definitely be the nineties for me because nice. it's the decade I grew up in, and to yeah. me, there were so many movies that you know, so many great movies that came out in the nineties. And yeah. of course, I'm like, like you, like you had mentioned, Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park was the movie. It was the movie that I that made me fall in love with movies because it's just like being able to like be a, like look at the big screen and you're seeing like dinosaurs like. Like who would have thought of that? Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. it looked real, and it and it just looked like they. And it's crazy, like hearing the story about like how like the T Rex was like massive, and it was like the rain like made it like too heavy, and like yeah. they couldn't be able to use it. And it's just like they like, were failing. Working, yes, it's just it's just crazy. Like the stuff they were giving us in the nineties, it was mm -hmm. just like everything felt fresh, everything felt new. Um, like with Scream, like I. Scream was not a movie that a, a nine-year-old is supposed to watch, but for per some apparent reason, my parents let me have the movie. I, I loved it. Um, so that was like my reason of like my love for slashers. Like nice. I remember taking that movie over and it was like a bunch of my friends that lived down the street. We watched it, we like screened, had a good time. Like it just that's when I had like my love of horror that came in play. And of course, you had like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, you had the movie. So it's like, yo, it like growing up on that and like the simplicity of just being a kid in mm -hmm. like watching cartoons like on a Saturday morning eating I you know eating cereal and just you know and not worry about anything just yeah you know just to grow up and play outside and get you know dirty and all that stuff so but the 90s most definitely would have to be like because I guess you could say like in the late like in the late 90s you had like the teen movies come out mm -hmm. And then, of course, like I said, like Dress Park, like Mortal Kombat. Yes. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, what else? Like, of course, like I Know What You Did Last Summer. Like, mm -hmm. and then like some of like, you know, like Nutty Professor. Just, it, it's just, it's just a all lot classics. of like night. Yeah, classics. it's just like, all, even, even Blade came out in the 90s. Like, yes. That's crazy to me. That was like 98. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's like, that's nuts to even think about. So it's just like in and, and that's it's just oh yeah like interview with vampire like just uh, from dusk till dawn like the list goes on and on and on like and I think that's why it was just like to me in the nineties I felt like the movies were a little more grittier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than what they are today because now we're dealing with like reboots sequels prequels and it's just like you know like superhero movies like we weren't even really getting superhero movies until like the 2000s so yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just it was just I guess like a simple time when people actually had like stories to tell I mean people still have like stories to tell but they're like either like adaptations or mm -hmm. like they're like not any like new original like ideas coming out and mm -hmm. it's just like and it's kind of frustrating <laughs> so that's why it's like it's always nice to have like those old movies to like go back to you know and also they have their unique style you know, like everything right. nowadays looks because most most movies are shot on digital, so they yes. kind of have the same vibe, same style. Mm. So everything looks samey the same. to an extent. Mm -hmm. Whereas in nineties, like yeah, as you said, like you know, it looks grittier. It looks yeah. like there's a there's a dirt to some of the movies. There's like you know, like mm -hmm. when you mentioned Jurassic Park, part of the reason the the effects still hold up and those dinosaurs look real is because they. Mm -hmm. A look uh, sometimes a bit rubbery because you know yeah. because they were like mostly rubber right yeah but also yeah. that you know the light just reflects differently from an actual object so our, our yes. you know our eyes actually make more sense out of that whereas you know if you go to something like avengers which is a great you know it's a great, the great yeah. movies. I'm not gonna shit on it, Avengers. It really is, but, yeah, but it's yeah. different. But it's different CGI <laughs> because you can tell exactly. they were just a bunch of actors in a mm. green room, and they're like, <laughs> "Hey, 
Thanos is there, army is there, you know, yeah. big big fucking ships is there, you know, fight. Yes. <laughs> exactly. They they gotta like direct them like, okay, like look over here, look over there, like swing your arm this like and with movies back then, it's like that, like you said, the object was actually mm-hmm. in front of that person and they can actually see it, touch it, you know, and that's why I think I loved mm-hmm. Jurassic Park because like they put in the work for like oh, yeah. the dinosaurs to look real. Like you Stand literally were thinking like Stan Winston, like, the guy, like dude, the king, like dude's a legend, and it's yes. just like, and it's just crazy the like the time and mm-hmm. patience that these people had to have, and then for like sometimes for that stuff to not work, it's like it's crazy, and they and then somehow it's like they just make it work, and it looks flawless, and then and and that's the one thing I wish like CGI would look flawless, like yeah, because like with Pirates of the Caribbean, like mm-hmm. you have Bill Nighy as you know as um. Oh my god, Davy Jones. Yes. Like, his makeup and like the CGI on that, because we know his face is covered in dots, but mm-hmm. they took the time and patience to make it look real. Yes. And you thought and it made you believe that it was real when you know it's like it's not real. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think that was another reason why I think I love uh Stellan Skarsgard because he just mentioned that in Pirates of the Caribbean, he, he was the only one who actually did the makeup. Like Mm-hmm. Nobody else did makeup. He said everybody was standing there with dots on their face. He said he loved it because he loved to see what the artists do with the makeup. And that's what I love too. I like, I want to see, like, I want to see an actor get lost in the makeup. Like, don't mm-hmm. like make it too over the top, but make it right to the point that it still looks good. Exactly. No, look, see, like when we were talking about CGI, right? Yeah. I never forget the story about how Star Wars episode one phantom menace came out <laughs> right mm-hmm. and i'm I, I, I watched then like some interview with uh ian mcdermott who plays palpatine mm-hmm. and okay. how he was you know he was so excited to act opposite natalie portman because he's just so you know leon the professional <laughs> right, so he right. was just like oh this this young kid back then obviously she was very young mm-hmm. when she was a kid she can act so i was really looking forward to meeting her and act opposite her because we had a scene mm-hmm. i arrive into this green room and suddenly there's George Lucas and tennis ball and I'm like so when is Natalie coming and George Lucas just points to the tennis ball and says that's Natalie now we can act and that was just yeah that's like part of the like I'm a big prequel defender because I grew up on on those and I can appreciate them more same yeah but there is definitely some sort of like you know the CGI fakiness where you can tell Oh yeah, this is just empty room. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is just nothing, <laughs> and everything is like you yeah, know. Right. <laughs> and when it stands out, and that's the thing about CGI, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We you only notice it when it's bad. You don't know like exactly. Mad Max Fury Road. Like many people point to Mad yeah. Max Fury Road, and they're like, "Oh, the practical effects." I don't think many people realize how heavy CGI is in that movie. Like they did, mo- right. you know, they went into the desert. They shot on locations. They did a lot of stuff practically. However, yes, <laughs> if you look at some of the behind the scenes videos, you'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, there's actually a lot of fucking CGI, but it blends it so well. <laughs> yes, yes. And we don't notice that, and we think, oh, this looks fucking real because the That's setting right. is real. So they kind of just enhance the setting rather than create everything. And I think that's right. the main difference between what we are describing, right? Like, you know, like in the 90s mm-hmm. where because CGI was the pricier op- op- option, right? If you right. wanted to make a movie, yeah. you, you wouldn't save money doing CGI. No, they would actually inflate your budget. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, that's, you know, that's why many people or many companies mm-hmm. choose to, you know, Argyle yeah. has a <laughs> great scene in Greece where, you, like, mm-hmm. you know, Dua Lipa is driving to Greece and it's no that's just fucking it's green screen good. and I'm like what the fuck that's just <laughs> shambles shambles no but 90s yes. 90s is I've I've said this before I'll say it again on this mm-hmm. podcast I have a strong suspicion in about 10 to 15 years when there's going to be a new wave of directors coming to Hollywood yeah. people closer to our age who grew up on 90s they will quote 90s they will that'll yeah. be their decade because there's some amazing like 1994 and 1999 some excellent years for movies from Shawshank yes. Redemption from Forrest Gump yes. from like you know Pulp Fiction to yes. 99 Saving Private Ryan right like you know yes just uh, like and many many more I cannot think of off the top of my yeah, head but it's so insane many. 
it's insane yes. it's it's a great think, decade yeah because like my because it's my favorite like adaptation of romeo and juliet when Leonardo dicaprio and, Co- and claire danes came out in I, 95 96 i think 95, I think. 96 yeah, yeah, yeah 95 96 and then it, it it, Bas. It, it, it was just, yes it's like i just loved him and that's why when people were like talking about elvis and i was like if if you follow mm-hmm. baz larman's like his whole like filmography it's like his movies look like this like yes they're not they're not gonna be like some simple movie they're always gonna be like in your over face. the top it, yeah. yes over the top in your face and that's what i like love about him and that's what i kind of loved about um romeo and juliet because mm-hmm. he was like literally like in your face mm-hmm. and it was more instead of swords and i like the way that instead of calling the guns guns they call them swords mm-hmm. their guns were their swords and it's mm-hmm. like instead of like you know carriages and horses and like dressing like you know like in the period you know pieces it was like in modern day he made yeah. it modern he made it for you know like you know kids like like the kids like me like you know or like people who love who loves like shakespearean you know Mm -hmm. stories it was just modernized and not like even though he kept the words the same he just made it more to people can actually i guess like i guess you could say like understand it in and relate to that time yeah Yeah, i can relate to it at that time so Mm -hmm. that was definitely i i don't know how many times that movie got played in in my house like i still have the soundtrack and the score like it was just one Damn. of my movies like yeah dedicated it, fan it, here no yes, nice. like <laughs> definitely for me it's favorites. moulin rouge for me moulin oh, rouge yeah, such a good one <laughs> no for me I'm, my top five movie of all time like literally mm-hmm. not even joking moulin i've seen that movie so many times it's <laughs> amazing so good so so good that's big Baz Luhrmann right there like for Mm -hmm. me like you know I've seen Romeo and Juliet once and it was good (laughs) Moulin Rouge is just a league of their own for me that's just (laughs) Nicole Kidman Ewan McGregor Mm -hmm. yes prime their prime and I think that was great because um I think yeah that was the movie Um, I remember my mom telling me she was like that was the movie that made her fall in love with Nicole Kidman like that mm-hmm. was the movie for her and i think and i have to agree with my mom too that movie and the others that she mm-hmm. did oh yeah love love loved her in the in in the um in the others she was so amazing in that movie but she Moulin is. rouge but Moulin rouge and i just love how he did his own mixture of like modern music and just and even though it was like an eight like in the late 1800s and yes. it was just i just and i love the cast like the cast is great and and just hearing you and mcgregor like seeing um this song by I was like Elton John. I just I love that whole scene the way he sings it. It's just to me it was perfect mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. and like the whole um I love the rock singing scene. Oh that scene was amazing. Like that scene right there, I just I I love like the whole like thing how it plays out from like yes from the whole dancing to like going to uh, uh Satine and um was it the Duke? Was it yeah, Duke, it Duke? Yes, the Duke. Yeah, like it's like going back and forth, like because yes. it's literally like the same thing, like she's going through, and it was just mixed perfectly. Like it, yeah, Bev, he's definitely up there. He's definitely a great for me. Too. The Roxanne scene is literally when I I first saw Moulin Rouge when I was like fourteen, fifteen. And mm-hmm. that was the, one of the first movies I've ever noticed editing in a good way because that the Roxanne scene, how yes. it's edited and you, it's wild, it's trippy, but you mm-hmm. never yes. lose, you never lose where you are. You never, right. and it meshes well with the right. music, it meshes well with the emotions, it meshes, meshes well yes. with everything else. Um, yes. And it comes together. I'm like, how mm-hmm. is this not been even nominated for editing at the Oscars? Like right. that's fucking insane. Like it look just the editing of that movie is it's wild, but it's on purpose. Yeah. It's purposeful and it's yes. sh- it's edited around the action and not because of the action is messy as fuck, so we need to edit it down. Yeah. No, it's edited <laughs> to, for the music, for the action. Yeah. Such a oh, no because that, that whole because that whole scene is so chaotic because yes. it's like he's trying he's trying to get him to understand like you fall in love with this woman is always going to turn out bad with this type of woman. It's like, you can't have them for yourself. So it's like, you're watching. Yes. It's like, you're watching, you're watching him like kind of like Sparrow. Like he's like on the balcony, like screaming, like to the night sky. And they're like, and you just see like the dancing and then like, you know, like tossing like uh, the dancer around and she's just like laughing hysterically. And then you see Satine with the Duke and she's, and she's terrified. And it's just like, it's like a lot of emotions, but it was done perfectly. 
and it's one of the first or first was one of the probably the key scene where we see duke and how evil he can get like you know yeah, like because he before that he you can see like glimpses but most mm -hmm. of it is like he's like this like a mumbling idiot right yes and then when he's when he turns pure evil and it's like you yeah. see how why you should be terrified of him and why nicole kidman's character satine is terrified of him mm, and exactly. it's exactly such a no that's a masterpiece it was it's like now I want to like after this now I kind of want to rewatch it. <laughs> I rewatched it like two months ago for like Shane and I do a video podcast where I made him okay. rewatch it again. So I rewatched <laughs> it like two months ago and I want to rewatch it again. Like again, like non. I'm not even joking. Top five for me, top five movies, and it's yeah. been for a while because it's it's such a fucking awesome movie. Oh yeah, Moulin okay. Rouge. Yes, Moulin Rouge. I need to watch yes. the original by the way from fifty. There's a one like fifty one. Yeah. I want to say. I yeah, want to see how one. this one. I do too. Because that will. I want to see it. Will be, yeah, this should be interesting. Like, like yeah. I love older movies. Like, I love these. Mo I've just seen. Uh, if you like movies like this, it's not a mm -hmm. different. It's not as obviously as cinematic, but it's mm. it's such a beautiful movie. I just watched it the other week. The Red Shoes. Have you heard about that movie? It's quite famous. Uh, I've, heard, I, I've heard of the red shoes i i've heard of that but i don't think i've ever watched it but i've heard of the red shoes it's worth it it's i watched that finally i have a blu-ray on my it's a lovely like uh, this uh collection the uh, special edition collection like uh red shoes uh, blu-ray beautiful and the movie mm -hmm. just there's a sequence of the uh, because it's about ballet right and the okay. sequence of the red shoes is like 15 mm -hmm. minutes long and okay. you see it from several perspectives of the ballerina who is transformed oh, okay. into the story through the perspective of the audience, through the perspective of everything else. And like there's several different perspectives and mm -hmm. it's from 40, 1948. And the okay. movie is that sequence, that 15 minute or so sequence, one mm -hmm. of the best sequences I've ever seen in a movie. And it's from 1948. And like <laughs> genuinely one of the most beautiful things you will ever see. The movie, okay. awesome. <laughs> Okay. I, I see that it's on Max. I'm definitely gonna subscribe so I can watch it. Is. It is no, it, yeah, that's how Shane watched it. Yeah, and that's how Shane. I <laughs> look, I girl. I don't think you will. I don't think you will regret because I I <laughs> need to, I need people like it's a it's a classic. Mar it's okay. Martin Scorsese <laughs> often calls it one of the best movies ever made, and he actually okay. put money towards restoring this movie. By the way, so oh, wow. you yeah, know cool. he he helped prevent. Of course, you see, you know, the, like prevents uh, or not prevents of helps course. a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of movies to get restored, and like you know, for future generations. Which I love that cinema guy. You know, takes you know cares about cinema. Shock, but also great. Please, <laughs> uh, please let him live another 20, 30 years. Like you know, like we need somebody like him around. We just need him. Now it's yes, we do. We really do. Yeah. Do you have any movie hot hot takes? Ooh, um, my. <laughs> It's like it's always been a big one for me. And okay. It's just funny because um I just see like a lot of people like praising this movie like up and down my timeline on X or you know I always okay. call it Twitter. Um, <laughs> but La La Land, I I really did not give a care for La La Land. Like I I see. I'm I'm sorry, but I did not give a fuck about this movie. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I tried to get into it, and it's like I heard people like, oh my god, it was so good, it's so good. I was like, okay. I'm like, let me check this movie out. I'm like, let mm -hmm. me see what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I remember me and my mom watched it from home. Um, and I was just like, it was like, I think it was before the Oscars. Yeah, it was before the Oscars. She's always mm -hmm. trying to like watch best pictures before like anything. But mm -hmm. I was just like, I just felt like it was being held high as like some prestigious like mm -hmm. film. Like, like everybody needs to watch it before they die. And it's just like, yeah. And to me, it actually wasn't. I just found it to be some basic musical about two people falling in love in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know what I was supposed to get out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. to be honest, I was like, I was bored. I just, I, I couldn't wait for the movie to, like, be done. I, yeah. I don't, I, I just didn't, I couldn't get into it like everybody else because everybody was just like, oh my god, like, it was the mm -hmm. movie of the year. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. this movie just and, and and what's so crazy is that like everybody loved that movie of uh of Damien's, but I actually liked Babylon better. Okay, okay. And that movie was and that movie was like so chaotic and just so out there and just big as well. But I mm -hmm. actually enjoyed it more than yeah. La La Land. 
Yeah. And it, it and I just didn't understand like how that movie got nominated for anything, La La Land. Like I was mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. Like, and mm-hmm. of course we all know what happened that night. Everybody <laughs> thought it was gonna get best picture. And, and I was like so upset because I kept telling my mom, I'm like, Moonlight's gonna get it. I'm like, I I'm like, I'm standing, I'm standing on it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm standing on business. I'm like, they're gonna get it. And then they were like La La Land. And I wanted to like pick my job off the off the floor. Yeah, it was such and a chaotic like, night. <laughs> And she was like, I told you. And I was like, no. I was like, Moonlight still won. And then, like, the producer, he was like, no. He's like, they were wrong. I'm like, it's yeah. Moonlight. I was like. <laughs> How he pulled the envelope. Like... <laughs> Zoom on that envelope. <laughs> it said Moonlight. I was like, I told you. I was like, I knew the better movie would have won. And it did. I was like, so happy. I thought that was going to be, like, a night of disappointment for me. Mm-hmm. I was like, I hate that movie so much. Yeah. And it's like, and I, and I tried to like go back and watch it just to see, I'm like, maybe I was wrong, but I mm-hmm. still felt the same way. Like, I just was like, no, I'm like, I can't like, so, and I think the same, and it's like the same thing with like, um, Frozen too. Everybody was like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Mm-hmm, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I only like Olaf. I just like <laughs> Olaf. Like, just give me Olaf. I don't care about nothing else. Just, just yeah. give me Olaf. Just give me the snowman. <laughs> nice. That <was> it. <laughs> that's, to be fair, that's fair. Like Frozen too. uh. Like it's it's okay. It's like yeah. Yeah. No, but La La Land, you know what's funny? Two things. So first of all, mm-hmm. you're not the first person to actually bring up La La Land in their controversial movie take. <laughs> so you're not alone. Okay? okay you're good. not alone. I'm happy I'm not alone. <laughs> yes. And second, this is actually where like one of the because again, like uh, Damien Chazelle that mm-hmm. movie is heavily influenced by like movies of the past. One of them being The Red Shoes, how he oh. went about like certain scenes. So many people yeah. were like, oh, this is not the new, this is Red Shoes, you know, and this was like, you know, 48. But yeah, and, uh, to, uh, in the, the the Oscar night, I'll never forget. I was watching it live, which watching it live mm-hmm. here mean, it means you start at 1 a.m. and you go to bed around 5 a.m. So like you need oh to pull on all night. Yeah. Time zones. Oh, How do wow. they work? That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so, but it's, like, the... it's five o'clock for us. Yeah, it's like five See? o'clock yeah. for us here, and it's uh, and it's over at like after eight o'clock at night. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. Because this year, I think they changed the times. Now it's four instead of five. Oh, I need so, to see. I need so to they... check. I've booked the time yeah. off from work, so I can actually <laughs> because I'm the crazy bastard who will watch it alive. You know, like. <laughs> No, yeah, but I, I still remember. I still remember the night where, like, yeah, like as you say, they announced La La Land. You know, yes. And I'm like, well, that's expected. You know, because it was between La La Land and Moonlight. Right. I was like, all right, time to go to bed. And suddenly, like, you know, so the producers thanking everybody, you know, yeah. the God, the Jesus, everybody, and like, and suddenly I see a dude in a headphones walking over. And I was like, wait, what? Usually yeah, these happens. usually those dudes are not in a shot. What the fuck? Is... And there's a second dude, and suddenly mm-hmm. panic on the stage. I was like, "What the fuck is happening behind them? What the... did they? What did what did... what happened? What happened?" And I was like, "Oh, they read the wrong thing." I was like, "Wait, is this a is this a joke? Is this yeah, a joke?" So I was like, "Holy cow!" I was like, "Did they just do this wrong?" I know they were so pissed off at Warren Beatty. They were like, "Dude, what yeah? did you do?" But he it wasn't his fault. Like you know, like like no, like... yeah. <laughs> and like he passed it. He tried to pass it off to Faye Dunaway. <laughs> And yeah, Faye was just like, I, oh, I see La La Land. I'll announce La La Land because that's what the envelope says. N- you know, I'm going to yeah, ignore the Emma Stone of, like, part. actually reading it. Yeah, ignoring <laughs> everything. Just like, oh my God, that was like the biggest fumble that night. I was yeah. like, how did you guys do that one? Not even that <laughs> night, just the history. Like, you know, there was... Yes. <laughs> until, until, well, yeah, there was the most controversial thing until the slap happened. You know, yeah. it's just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, no like, but... Oh! That was just oh my fuck! Like how did this? Yeah. And the guy, the guy who responsible for the envelopes was fired because then it came out right. that he was too busy, come uh, taking selfies with everybody and not paying attention to envelopes. Oh my god! It's like you got a job to do. It's like you have one job and it's like you failed at that. Like yeah, we yeah, shouldn't no. have a job. That's 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 fucking <laughs> insane. No, like was, I'll never that night forget. That crazy. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, and I went, went to, went to my work after because I, I don't know why I was crazy enough to go to my work after. So it was on the radio, right. and I was like, yeah, I saw it live. I saw it live. I was like, right. what the fuck? That was so great. It's like I just like watching stuff live because it's like you don't, you never know what you're gonna get. You never know. For better or worse. Yes. <laughs> exactly. For better or worse. <laughs> so, any other hot, hot movie takes, or do you want to move on? Um, I. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty, yeah, mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. that's pretty good, yeah. All right, we and with that, we can move to the underrated part of this podcast, where yeah. I'll ask you, Chantal, 
who do you think yeah. is the most underrated actor we have right now? Ooh, um, I, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm gonna be biased because I was like really like going back and forth with things, and I'm okay. like, who's I'm like who's underrated? Who's underrated without being like no, I'm like you're you're you know, and and, and I think I kind of like stick I kind of stick to one person, and I just feel like he because he's such a good actor and he's still young and he still has time to grow mm -hmm. and yes i'm like i know we've seen him like you know we've seen him in star wars like he's done leads in movies we've seen him in the second pacific rim movie i'm going with john boyega ah yes i i i i fell in love with him as soon as i saw him in uh attack the block like, yes uh that's a great I movie fell in love with him literally literally fell in love with him like I, I don't even know how I came across this movie, but I just knew I'm like, I, I love like any kind of sci-fi, like any mm -hmm. British movie, any like anything that's like I know I can look at it and I'm like, okay, it's gonna be good. I know it's gonna be good. Yes. And um and British sense of humor. I'm like, I love British sense of humor. And it's just crazy to me how people are like because I think I read an article too when they like showed this movie. I think it was like at South by Southwest, and they wanted to make sure that everybody understood mm -hmm. them, like their words, everything. And I'm like, how can you not understand what they're saying? Like, I I understand perfectly what mm -hmm. everyone is saying in this movie. And it it's just like, I'm like, their accents are not hard to hear people. Like, you can mm -hmm. hear what they're saying. Like, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm American, I know, but I'm like, Americans suck, okay? So, <laughs> but, but John Boyega, hands down, like, fell in love with him and mm -hmm. uh, attacked the block. He was just, he was just very, even though his, his to me, his character was like, so he was like, really quiet but he was like but he played that role very well like he was leader. someone who was like he was like the leader right he mm -hmm. was like the leader mm -hmm. and he knew he knew what to do even though everything that was happening to them was like some new ass experience like aliens in our block like what are we supposed to do with that like mm -hmm. but it was like he he knew how to like make sure to like have his friends like he was trying like everything he could do to like keep his friends safe make sure like everybody like just keeping everybody alive, including himself. And even yeah. though he was the main target, and it was like he was trying everything in his power to like make sure that everybody stays safe in the block, even though mm -hmm. some people were like, you know, ended up losing their life. And you could just see like he's he's and he's a young kid and he's yeah. like taking on like all these responsibilities. And he's like, when she asked him, he was like, How old are you? And he was like, 15. And she was mm -hmm. like, she was like, I thought you were older. And he was just like, Thank you. <laughs> it's like and it's like kids like at like the kids like he was playing it's like and you're living in like in that world it's like you have to grow up quick and he played it so well and so i was like so excited to see him in star wars and just to see them push him back you know just push him off to the side mm. and you know when you find out that he was supposed to be a part of the force like yep. he was a jedi like he was supposed to be a jedi yeah and and I just hated how they like, like I said, pushed them off to the side. And like in the third movie, like mm -hmm. something would happen, and he would be like, and they'd be like, "How did you know that?" And he was like, "It's a feeling." And I'm like, I'm "Like, can we? It's like, are we not gonna address this?" No, okay, that's cool. <laughs> so I'm kind of like upset that now they're like doing another movie, but it's not like mm -hmm. pertaining him. It's pertaining to Ray, and it's just yeah. like, and we already know he says something about like he would not work with Disney again. Like mm -hmm. he's. Like it came from his mouth, like he wouldn't. And it's like, and I would love to see like a movie where he would come back and we yes. get to see him, you know, go into the fourth. But mm -hmm. of course, I'm like, we're not gonna get that, and it mm -hmm. just sucks. But I, it's like so far, like everything that I have seen him in, especially like his latest feature, which was um, which I reviewed, of course, was um, damn, they clone Jerome or uh, Tyrone. Tyrone. Yes, yeah, that's a great movie. Clone, yeah, damn, they clone Tyrone. Yes. I it's like I fell in love with that movie, especially like with him, Jamie Foxx, um, you know, Deanna Paris, like everybody was good in that movie. And yes. it's like and you can see with John Boyega with playing like different characters in that movie. He he's another one who can hold the screen. He's another one that you can like watch and he's like very he's a natural. Like Yes, he is. He's a natural. He has the ability to be a leading man. It's just that he needs to be given those type of roles. Like and right. I just hate that he's like not getting those type of roles. Like it's like you're seeing it's like I've seen like other movies that he's been in, like Naked Singularity or like Breaking, but it's like I'm like, I want to see him more. Like mm -hmm. I like I want to see him grow. And it, mm -hmm. and I love the fact that they are doing a sequel to Attack the Block because it has been over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of happy that they're coming back. But it's just like it's like give this man more roles. Like I like it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's like a, a limited series or like a like another like saga or whatever just 
put this man in more movies because it's like I he has a lot of he has a lot of potential and it's like I just want people to see that potential because it's like don't don't it's like don't squander him like please don't like just like let him keep working <laughs> yeah they they did him so dirty in Star Wars they yes. like he was set up exactly as you say he was set up to possibly become a Jedi like he actually like, fucking held right. the stars you know lightsaber in a, episode 7 and I was like yes. oh Yes, he's gonna be. I was like, he's so gonna ready. be Jedi. It's gonna be so fucking cool. Let's go. <laughs> and then episode eight, yeah, okay, like you know, n- nothing much, but okay, he still was a big part of it. Cool. And then episode right. nine, because they obviously had to erase everything that happened in episode eight. I'm like, but well, uh, okay, what the f- <laughs> like, what was his point then? Like, the- like he was exactly. a he, he was a stormtrooper. He starts as like a stormtrooper who has like a moral di- dilemma about what he's doing. Which is great. Yes. That's something we have not seen in Star Wars, and then it just right. fizzles out. Like it, that's it. Like yeah. I'm like, it was, what? Yeah, they did him dirty. They they like, fucking they, ugh, <laughs> like you know. It still they makes did me him mad. So dirty. And I understand. <laughs> look, I understand him not wanting to go back to Disney. I wish mm-hmm. had have if there was a script where like he would come back with Ray because I you know, the you know she's also been kind of short shifted, but that's another story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if had those two actually been given like a proper script with a proper director yes. and and mainly Disney fucking let them mm-hmm. be <laughs> let just you know let them shoot its thing don't change directors halfway through the movie <laughs> like we did with Solo I... and the other stuff it's... right yes like you know I would love to see the redemption because yeah he Attack at the block, exactly like you. I've seen it for, mm-hmm. uh, before Star Wars, and I was like, "Damn, who's this dude? John, you know, yes. John Boyega." Okay, and then he was announced for Star Wars. I was like, yes, the Attack the Block guy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Because uh, Attack exactly the Block, Attack mm-hmm. the Block. Like I, what I loved about it, he is part of the. He's part of a gang. He are not good people. Like he's standardizing. Yeah. He literally like robs yes. the Jody Jody Com- Comer. What is, is that mm-hmm. Jody Comer? There? Yeah. Yes, yes. He literally robs her in the, in the beginning of the movie. So <laughs> like, but then you kind of root for him because you understand him. And then they bond this unlikely exactly friendship where like, mm-hmm. okay, we you know, <laughs> enemy of my enemy is my mm-hmm. friend. So you know mm-hmm. what. I don't really like you, but they're fucking aliens we need to kill, so let's right. fucking go. <laughs> bruv. <laughs> because obviously everybody, it's in London, so everybody's bruv and blood. Yes, <laughs> just... yes. No, I, It's just, yeah, it's one of those really good, like, sci-fi films, for sure. And again, he is a lead man. He is a yes. lead actor. Yes. Who, he clearly you give is. him a good, big Fran- even franchise, but not so, not yes. nice to have a franchise. But if you put no. him in a franchise, I could see him again. It's a shame he doesn't want to work with Disney because I could see him being part of MCU in such a villain here. Yeah. Or I don't care. I don't know comic books. Give him something great. Give him something juicy. Let yes, him. Let him cook. <laughs> let him fucking cook because he deserves it. He's got the talent. Yes, he he is so talented. He, I think, like exactly as you said, they cloned Tyrone. He was great mm. in that movie. Yes. And I genuinely think we haven't seen the peak of what he can do. Because exactly. he's so he is young, right? He's young. Yes. He's been in quite a few things, but we haven't seen the peak of John Boyega. I want to see what he can do if he yes, gets the, wanna... if he gets the chance. Yes. I just want to see him dig deep. Like I just want to see him and just be like, that's it. I'm like, that's what I want people to see. Like I I, I want people to see that he he can he can go like toe to toe with like anybody. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who it is because he's that good. And it's like I just want more people to see that he he is the leading man. I and that he can he can lead a movie. Like Yes. I really hope <laughs> in like then I think it's one of those not if but when. When we yeah. can say, you know, Oscar winner John Boyega, I think it should exactly. be hopefully in a matter of ten to fifteen years, hopefully a little sooner rather than later. But yeah, give I him a great that. movie. <laughs> no, like yes. give him a one great movie, and he yes. will be there. He will be in a contention, and I, he is one of those like it should be a question of when, not if. Like, right. it's... but speaking of that, like, who do you say is the most underrated actress we have right now? Ooh, um, that was an- <laughs> it was another one I was like going back and forth again, mm-hmm. and um, and to me, I feel like um, for me, I was trying to choose between the two, but if mm-hmm. I if I had to think, I would have to say Regina Hall 
Regina Hall oh. is another one for me. She's she's been around for a good minute. We all know her from you know Brenda Meeks from you know uh, scary movie series. Um, and now Oscar winner Regina Hall. Is a, um oh no Regina King is the, is the oh Oscar. wait 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 yeah my my apologies yes <laughs> no worries Regina Hall yeah she she started her she started in comedy more than anything mm-hmm. she yeah started, like I said Brenda Meeks um but when I remember the first time I seen her was mm-hmm. in um what is that um it was the movie um what was it called the best man and okay. she um uh, she played a um she played a uh exotic dancer and that was like her first like like I wouldn't I don't I think it was like her first role but um that was like the first time I saw her I I had no business seeing this movie at this time in my age but it, it happened anyway she was good in that but I fell in love with her as Brenda in scary movie <laughs> like mm-hmm. she same she is like the funniest person to me and then like when she was like in Think Like a Man, um, about last night, Girls Trip, um, uh, the hate the hate you give, like little like she she's another one who who can go across the board. Like she can mm-hmm. do comedy, she can do dramatic. I mean, she it's, it's like she can like I just I just love her because she's genuinely funny and she she's another one who can like I said, be serious. Like mm-hmm. I feel like the one movie I think that people should have seen her in was called uh, "Support the Girls," which mm-hmm. came out in 2018, where she's like a manager of a sports bar, and it's kind of like um, I guess you could say it's kind of like the place she's running is like a Hooters. Okay, <laughs> but um, she's like literally just trying to um, she takes it serious. Like she wants to make sure that the girls are like protected, mm-hmm. you know. But she's um she has to literally deal with like every trying day like it's like testing her optimism mm-hmm. like she's just trying to you know she's just trying to be a den mom to these ladies yeah and she's just like challenged every day by unruly customers <laughs> a robbery that like an attempted robbery in like another business that basically threatens her and her mm-hmm. livelihood so she was just very. Like I said, she's very nurturing, very motherly, but then also it was just like you just seeing a woman patience being tested. Yeah. And it's just watching her just take that role on. She was just it's like she's just being she's just she's not being used to like her with her talents. Like Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, I don't want to be that person where I'd be like, it's because of her race. I don't want to be that person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I just feel like she should be getting noticed more. Mm-hmm. And I believe she is getting noticed a lot more because I want to believe, I think I heard that she just signed on to a movie with um uh Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, damn. And yeah, and it's her... It's her, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Sean Penn. And I'm, like, so excited for this movie because I'm, like, I already know that she's going to be great. Like That's going to be, well, Paul Thomas Anderson, like, DiCaprio, her, and Sean yeah. Penn. The, yeah. Talk I'm about, like, like heavy hitters there. <laughs> exactly. It's like you got the two, you know, you got the two Oscar winners right there. And then you got Tom, you know, Paul Thomas, you know, Anderson, who's, like, a uh, Oscar nominee so I'm like mm-hmm. and he, so I'm like I, I just feel like even though we don't know what's really going on with the movie it's just just the, the cast alone and the director yes. alone I was just like no, I'm, I'm sold I'm, I'm definitely sold I can already feel like she's in, in another movie too Honk uh, Honk for Jesus Save Your Soul I heard yes, about she, that I... yes with her and Sterling K. Brown apparently it's good I haven't seen it yes. yet but apparently it's great it's so good because okay. it's basically um she plays the first lady and he's mm-hmm. a pastor to a mega church and they're mm-hmm. trying to reopen it and rebuild the congregation mm-hmm. followed by uh you know a scandal that involves her husband don't want to give too much away okay but it's it's kind of like a mockumentary <laughs> and it's it's serious it's funny Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like you just you're just watching her just trying to stand behind her, her husband mm-hmm. but she knows like like standing behind him it like what is causing her like it's like it's not good for her to be standing behind him for like what he has done but it's like you know like you're in a church and like this kind of thing it's like you have to be able to forgive but like this kind of thing is kind of hard for her yeah to do 
So it, it's just watching her like go back and forth, just trying to be like a good wife, a good first lady, but also thinking about herself and like what she's getting herself into while still standing behind her husband. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's and definitely so, yeah. on my like imaginary watch list. Like I've heard mm -hmm. good things from <laughs> few people because it seems like a very yeah. underseen movie, but all the people mm -hmm. you included who've seen it mm -hmm. are raving about it. So um, I know, like, okay, this is worth seeing. And yeah. no, Regina Hall, that's a great pick, because for me, like, scary movie, the first three scary movies are a big mm -hmm. part of my childhood. And for yes. me, <laughs> she is a much of a, like, you know, soul of the franchise as, you know, Anna Faris is. Like, those two, mm -hmm. you don't have yes. a scary movie without these two. Like, exactly. And they play so well off of each other. They are just so funny. <laughs> just... <laughs> They really are, <laughs> and yeah, like, and the girls trip, girls trip is also great. Like that's a I love great that. movie. So I haven't funny. seen. I heard. I heard about the support the girls movie. I heard about that. I haven't mm -hmm. seen it yet. I yet again, another one I need to put on my imaginary watch list. But I uh, I cannot wait, and I'm happy for her that she, she's gonna be with you know PTA and Same. DiCaprio and Sean Penn because that, that like seems exciting. like you know somebody is <laughs> like you know what we should give her a chance to be in a mm -hmm. big leagues. And like you know, yes. like you know, for her to return or to return to the big leagues, and mm -hmm. maybe maybe next year, maybe next year we'll see you know Academy Awards or like it's Oscar like, nominee. It'd be nice. It'd that'd be, be so nice. <laughs> that'd be that'd be so good. So, who right. do you think is the most underrated director we have right now? Who? Um, this one is like so tough. I'd be like trying to figure this one out because it's like mm -hmm. I feel like all the directors that <laughs> I like I enjoy, they all seem. To me, like every well, it's like everybody knows this person, like everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. But um, if I had to choose between like someone who's underrated, mm -hmm. okay, I think I kind of I even though I don't know if people would call him underrated. To me, I feel like he's underrated because it's like I just started getting into him recently after um I saw the movie The Favorite. It would have ah. to be um your ghost uh Latimos. Hot, it's like yeah Latimos yeah, yeah it was him like I literally just started getting into him um I think he's phenomenal I think he's great when it comes to his movies because they are like to they're like so out of the box yes and they're just like they're so on ordinary like they're just so like extraordinary to me like when the first time I think it was the killing of a sacred deer yeah yeah I remember yeah. seeing that movie and. And that was after I had seen The Favorite. And I was like, I love The Favorite. The Favorite mm -hmm. was was great. Me and my yeah. mom saw that movie. We love period pieces. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was like a given. Um, but when I saw The Killer of a Sacred Deer, I was just like, okay, I'm like, let me check this out. Because I'm like, I love Colin Farrell. I'm like, I love, you know, um, Nicole Kidman. Barry Cohen. Yeah. And, um, and Nicole Kidman. Um, but it's like when the movie first started, it was just like, you see, uh, you see a human heart. And I was just like, I'm like, Holy shit. I'm like, it's a nice I'm family not movie. The movie. Yeah. I was like, this is not what I was expecting. Like, for the first scene to be someone doing surgery <laughs> on an open heart, I was just like, for that right there, it like sold me. I was just like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> I and was then... like, I was literally sold. I was like, in it. And then I think the thing that was kind of crazy to me about the movie, it was like mm -hmm. how Colin Farrell and like Barry, they, Barry Huon, they did not like have like American accents. Mm -hmm. And this movie was done in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And they're like literally having like their Irish accents. And they were just, and I was just like, okay, I'm like, is this supposed to be overseas? Or are they just, they were just like, okay, we're just going to say, fuck the accents. You're just going to no, use yeah. a regular voice. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> and so I was like, I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> and so, and just keep watching the movie progress. And it was just like, some of the stuff like that was like going on like with the like with um the couple like mm -hmm. just like some of the stuff they would do in bed and stuff and then yep and it's just like it was just so weird and to me it was like out of pocket but it was just like so like interesting and I was intrigued because I was just like he's just showing us like how kind of like weird people can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, but I also love the fact, like, how the kid, like, Martin comes in and he's, like, telling him, like, hey, like, you got to make a choice. Like, mm -hmm. you're going to have to eat, kill, like, one of your, like, family members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> it, it was just, like, one of these crazy movies where it was just like, okay, it's like, you got a choice. Like, you did this, so I'm going to make you do that. And then if you don't do that, 
um, someone's gonna have to die either way. Yep. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, okay. And like that whole third act of them, like he's just like trying to like make up his mind of like who he's gonna take out in his family, and he can't. And so it's like he blindfolds himself and he blindfolds his family, and it it was just like so much chaos in like one scene, and then like it's like you're holding your breath because it's like you have no idea what's getting ready to happen like you don't know yeah. if he's gonna like take out one of his like you don't know if he's gonna kill his wife you don't know if he's gonna kill one of his kids which he doesn't go killing somebody <laughs> but it's just it's just crazy because it's like we don't even know what he did for for the kid to get to this point to be like hey like mm -hmm. you gotta do this yep or or he's like i'm still gonna make you know because like the kid thinks like because he thinks mm -hmm. He believes that he killed the kid's father. But it's mm -hmm. like, we really don't know what he, like, you know, did. So <laughs> that's why I was just sitting there, like, flabbergasted, especially at the end when everybody, like, gets up and he just, like, watches them leave. And, but it was just crazy how the daughter is just, like, so infatuated with this kid. And it's like, mm -hmm. this man, it's like, this kid made your father make a choice. And for some apparent reason, it's like, you're still, like, into him. Mm hmm and I just thought that was like the weirdest. <laughs> it was like the weirdest, but the most intriguing movie I've seen made by him because it was just not something I was expecting like at all. I'm just thinking like, oh, it's family. Oh, it's going to be like some dramatic kind of film. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you see the first scene, it's an open heart surgery. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be like a whole different story. Like, <laughs> it's like this, I was like completely off and it's like that's how I'm like I can't wait for poor things to come out because I know it comes out on Hulu next week mm. so it's like I'm like I can't wait to watch it because it's like one of the last two movies that I have to watch for best picture I was and my so it, I was gonna ask whether you had a chance to uh, watch poor things yet no I haven't had a chance I'm like I've been like oh. waiting because I was like I was literally getting ready to like pay to stream for it but then i was like oh i can wait i can just wait a little bit longer because it would be right before the oscars so i can mm -hmm. catch it so i wouldn't just because even it's... like if it was coming out after i would have been like forget it i'm just gonna rent it and let me just watch it <laughs> so... i will say poor things i'll say it's weirdly his most accessible movie as a like an, to an audience and oh. might be one of the most fucked up movies also like it's <laughs> it's insane without going into any spoilers. I'm not gonna spoil right. it for you, but I'll say this: Emma Stone. Like before, yes. I've seen her. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. this is Lily Gladstone's to lose the Oscar for best leading actress. After I watched and I heard a lot of hype for Emma Stone, and after mm -hmm. I watched it, I was like, yeah, I would be happy if we had another historic tie with the best leading actresses because. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be happy for either one. I cannot choose. Like genuinely, right. like I don't like I don't have a horse in this race. Like no. for the other uh, categories, it's pretty much a given now right. who's gonna win. Right. But for best leading, it's 50-50. It's between Emma and it's between realistically Emma Stone or Lily Gladstone. And, and that's where I keep seeing that a lot of to you. And like, especially when like watching the award season, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of been going like back and forth between Lily and Emma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm just like, and for me, because I've I've seen Killers of the Flower Moon, so I'm, of course I'm biased. And it's like, I'm like, I want it to she be is Lily, phenomenal. But it's like, she's like amazing in that movie. But yes. it's like, also, I still want to give, you know, Emma Stone a chance. So that's why I'm like, I want to see this movie. I want to see her in this because I, I love her. I, mm -hmm. I really do love Emma Stone as an actor because she's amazing. And I, I was kind of disappointed that she didn't get the the win for Birdman because mm -hmm. I thought she was great. And I thought she, she was. was better in Birdman than she was in La La Land. And I felt mm -hmm. like that win was just, mm -hmm. I, I, I just felt like she didn't deserve for that win. I felt like she should have got it for Birdman. And I... so I, because... Mm -hmm. But I think, <laughs> I think this time, I think because it's like she's been away for a minute and it's mm -hmm. like she's coming, like, you know, coming back. And yeah. so it's kind of nice to see her again. Mm -hmm. So for her to like come back with like this film and then already right straight out the gate, they're like, okay, she's coming for another Oscar. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> no, what she does in that movie, like <laughs> she, her character is just, there are some mm -hmm. choices she makes and she plays them so effortlessly. I'm genuinely like I really and it's happened before with the actresses in like sixty seven or eight. Mm -hmm. Something like that, where like Barbara yeah. Streisand and somebody else won 
like it was a tie and i was like can we have another tie between these two because i genuinely like i it's not like i don't want any of them like you know like uh to win i don't want the other to lose because right. like those are some powerhouses per of performances and mm -hmm. for yorgos specifically yorgos latimos yeah right. poor things uh if you can watch dog tooth there is like a greek movie from 2009 It's a nice family movie. I'll say all that I'm going to say. It's a nice family movie about one family. <laughs> it's nothing weird about them at all. <laughs> like there's that's that's a movie that's like basically we mm -hmm. and I as I read uh, as I written in my review, we need mm -hmm. this twisted fuck. Like he is a twisted fuck. <laughs> there's no other way how to put it, but I admire his Because he breaks <laughs> everything. He takes a genre, he breaks it down to his pieces, yes, and he makes us he, think. Yes. Poor things, poor things talks about seven different themes all at once. Like it, it talk, it addresses like, uh, mm -hmm. it addresses uh, sex. It addresses gender. It addresses like mm -hmm. you know all our like uh, society in a in a sense where we have the uh, poorest of the poor and like riches of the rich. And it never feels yeah. feels preachy. It never feels like in your face, even though it is kind of in your face. It is very in your right. face. <laughs> and it's so intentional about every single choice. Mark Ruffalo yeah. just shouts cunt several times. And it's the funniest thing you will ever see. <laughs> it's just and he, by the way, he if if it wasn't uh, Robert Robert Downey Jr.'s year, Mark Ruffalo mm -hmm. she could have, you know, that's a great performance also. Like he yeah. is unhinged in that movie he is great mm. in that movie and uh like <laughs> it's just you know you know he he doesn't have a chance to win but no emma stone like i right. whoever wins i'm yeah. gonna be happy but also i'm gonna be sad the other one had to lose and i i'm, <laughs> right. I'm secretly hoping for a, for a historic tie where they would announce ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. we have a tie emma stone and lily gladstone for best leading actress <laughs> uh, and i feel like nobody would actually mind to be honest it wouldn't be a cop-out I don't want to be like no. you know. I don't. I don't. I don't want to be like. Hey, everybody gets a medal. Yes, let's be all friends. Right. No, 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 it's, no. It's like one of those. <laughs> no, I don't want that. No, but if it does too, I feel like it's just it'd be shame for one of them to lose. But no, it's Yorgos is right. great choice. And again, he's a sick fuck. Mm -hmm. But we need sick fucks in this society. Yes, we, we do. Especially after seeing the lobster, I was like, okay. That's, <laughs> that's the one movie that still escapes me. Like I haven't watched that yeah. one yet, and I. Also, what I can recommend, there's a short he made called Nimic, I think. It's like 12 minute mm -hmm. short. You don't know what's happening, but you feel uncomfortable and it just ends. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, this guy uh... can build an atmosphere in 12 minutes. You don't know what's happening, but it, like, you, there's like right. something creepy going on and it just ends. I'm like, Yorgos, you bastard. Just, <laughs> I love it. Love it. No, I, I'm in I for it. any movie he makes. Like, he is just. Yes great i know the next one is great. quite hard because obviously there's so many movies but do you yes. have one that screams underrated to you personally um if any yeah because this one i was like i was so stumped i was like mm -hmm. um, i know i know so many like it's so yeah it's like literally like so many movies out there that could be seen as underrated and yep. to me you know you know what i'm just gonna have to go back to it because i okay. really oh i know actually oh. um i'm going back to brit i'm going back to british um <laughs> it's gonna have to be it's gonna be from agar right um it's definitely one of my favorites um mm -hmm. i'm going to say Shaun of the dead oh okay okay i'm not quite I, sure I if it's, it's underrated but no i, I love it because to go me off. i think um because to me you know like I'm American. I feel like a lot of Americans don't really get into like, you know, like British styles of movies, which I don't understand. I'm like, mm -hmm. there's nothing. It's like, I don't, I don't get it. I'm like, their humor is just a little bit different, yes. but I still get it. And I, and I love it. Like, I just, mm -hmm. I love British humor. And mm -hmm. so, um, it was just, <laughs> I don't even know how we even came across it. It was like me and my mom, she was, we just found this movie and we just literally like fell in love with it. Like, yeah straight off it was just it was hilarious it just it just every it's just like every scene is like Simon Pegg and Nick Ross are like amazing together like yeah it seems like every collaboration that they do and it didn't even have to deal with the Cornetto trilogy it was just mm -hmm. they're just good together 
Mm -hmm. And so, and just watching this film, like, it's just, it kind of makes fun of, like, the genre of, like, you know, like, zombie films mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And just, and, and, and it was, like, one of the one of the movies, like, at the time when it first came out, I was, like, 17, and I just remember telling my friends, I'm like, you guys gotta watch this movie. Like, you guys are gonna love it. And I was upset because nobody was really into it but me. And I was just, like, so heartbroken. I was, like, what mm -hmm. is wrong with you guys? I'm, like, this movie right here is gonna be a classic. I was, like, just wait. It is just, it to me, and I think that's what it is. It's, like, I don't know if it's, like, the, I don't, I, it's just crazy to me how, like, I don't know if it's the accents or what, but it's, like, you can understand everything, and they're just yep. like, I don't get it. I'm like, what is there not to get? I'm like, it's a perfectly good story. I'm like, it's, it's like Sean is like literally like like at like a point in his life where it's like nothing's not working out. I'm like, he's lost his girlfriend. He's lost. He's like, he's about to lose his job. Like, it's just like, and then on top of that, he's dealing with a zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's just like it's like all over the place, but it's also funny, and it's just like some of the um. Like some of the scenes, like just like some of like the jokes and everything, they like they land perfectly. Yeah. And it's like one of my it's like one of my movies where I like I know it word from word. Mm -hmm. And and but I feel like I'll, there's still like a lot of people out there that probably have not seen this movie. They probably heard of it. Mm -hmm. but they probably like they just like, oh, like I've heard of it, but I haven't gotten into it. And it's like I just feel like those are like like the Coronado. Yeah, the Coronado trilogy, like Shaun the mm -hmm. Dead, Hot Fuzz mm -hmm. um, at, at World's End. I feel like everybody should just watch those. I'm like, you know, they don't have, it's like, they don't have anything to do with each other, but they have, like, they just have, like, that same, like, it's like, um, I think how they do it, it's like zombie, and it's like sci-fi, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, the call and then sci-fi. Like, I love, yeah, and I love how, like, it's just, just that right there is, like, those three movies are, like, perfect, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's just, all of them, they just, like I said, they feel fresh, they feel new, it's just, like, every joke is, like, original, it's, like, nothing's repeated, like, yeah. and it's just, like, and they have, like, that, they usually have, like, them running, like, jokes in the movies, which I love, like, they're, it's just, it's another one of those movies that's, like, like a feel-good movie, but it's, like, it makes you laugh, mm -hmm. it does kind of make you want to cry, because there are some sad moments, but it's yeah. still, like, a good movie, like, I, it was one day I was watching it, my dad had like came in and he literally sat down. He didn't even get out of his clothes. He like literally sat down and watched it with me and he was laughing all the way through. And I was like, see, I'm like, my dad is older and he understood this movie. I'm like, anybody can like understand it. It's like, it's just, just one of them really good movies that you can literally watch today and still laugh. Exactly. No, Cornetto trilogy is great. I think it's underrated, like the Sean did specifically. I think it's underrated because many people I know love Hot Fast the most. And I understand yes, it, but yes, for me, exactly. my favorite's always been Shaun of the Dead. My favorite's yes. also, like, and it's also, it's just, you know, when he said it's, you know, it is it is a trilogy. Like, you know, not only it's mm -hmm. Cornetto because, you know, he, he like, Edgar Wright is like, well, red is zombies, like, blood. Uh, blue mm -hmm. is, in, in the UK, blue is cops, like, you know, coppers. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and green are aliens. But also, yes. he said, if you think about it, the uh, the Shaun of the Dead is more it's like about growing up because this guy he's kind of like stuck in almost this like being yeah. a teenager with like living with a roommate his girlfriend right. wants him to come in but he's kind of like just wants to have his like ad you know with this guy yeah the hot fuzz is about like growing up and actually like taking responsibility and being the responsible adult and the uh, yes. uh, you know world's end is like you know reminiscing of oh we had a good times but what's happening yeah. now like we are getting older and it's just I I love exactly. all of them. I think people mm -hmm. shit on the world's end the more, or like you know, like more than unnecessary. Like I don't think it's bad as bad as people seem to think. Just exactly no, and also <laughs> like Sean, but Sean of that is such a classic. And speaking of that, another movie that's mm -hmm. plus twenty years old now, like twenty some twenty one. Yes, it's nuts. It's, it's crazy how like it's all it's like they're like these movies are actually slowly becoming classics. It's, it's, it's and crazy. they are no in my it, eyes exactly no yes, like Shaun of are. the Dead. Shaun of the Dead <laughs> is like the Cornet trilogy is a like a modern classic, mm -hmm. modern day classic. And yes. Edgar Wright for me, like he rarely misses, and he yes. rarely misses. And I still wish I we could have seen his Ant Man. He's been working on yes, for like I eight fucking that. years. He's been working I on it. Love to see it. He just he he was working on that movie since two thousand six <laughs> or seven before MCU That's became nice. MCU. Yeah, we should have like, gave it to him. <laughs> I honestly think, like I've all I said it in the past, I mm -hmm. have a feeling had the MCU 
had uh, known what they had on their hands with guardians and they took the big risk yeah. with guardians had they known about how these weirdos nobody ever heard of will be such a massive hit they would have like they would have been like you know what edgar I'll let you do your thing like yes. if only we gotten me yeah me too and you can still see mm. some of his touches like i still you can see some of his touches in the first ant-man movie which is why the mm-hmm. first ant-man is uh, pretty good the rest of them well, Quantum Mania is all great. <laughs> no, no, it's not. right. <laughs> no, it's not. But no, it's a Shaun of the Dead. Excellent, excellent choice. Oh, what a great movie! Yeah. If no, yeah, if somebody Very. somehow hasn't heard of it or seen it, watch the entire thing. Like watch the corner to trilogy, please. You will think Shandala. You talk me later. You're like honestly, you'll thank us later. And yes. what would you say is the most under TV show we have right now? Ooh, um, yeah, because there's like so many shows out there, and it's like yeah. I just. <laughs> it's so I know. many I know. it's not overrated um <laughs> i know um ooh, what is something that i just watched recently um um oh my god this is so like this is like so much as like came out over the years and it's like i know um, no, i know like, this there's a so many tuffy. <laughs> um I, look at me i'm trying to Ooh, um, I think there is one that I actually like that I actually just started getting into and it's actually funny and I it came out two years ago. It's with um Maya Rudolph. It's called Loot. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's on Apple TV and she's literally uh. she's just like newly single and she just got a divorce from her billionaire um ex husband and it, she's like the third wealthiest woman in the world. And so she's decided to like run this charity that she forgot that she had fun in. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> and so it's like actually hilarious just watching her just like, you know, like go through like um like being like this woman who's living in luxury with mm-hmm. her husband until like her birthday she finds out that he's having an affair with his assistant and so mm-hmm. um she ends up, you know, getting a divorce and so she gets the money and it's just like <laughs> she's like all over the place yeah at the because she's like after she's like on a she like the fun like the charity that she funded that she totally forgot because she went on a previous bender uh, see. <laughs> and so, and so she's like so she's just like trying to like figure out her life right now mm-hmm. while trying to like with all this money and so it's just her she's just like she's hilarious in it and i'm happy to see her more often because it's like after you know like saturday night live it's like she kind of got like quiet and she would like appear like here and there and stuff yeah and i just think it's funny because uh and i and she's great and so that's why i'm kind of happy to see her like lead this show and it's like i hope that and i hate it because like apple to me i feel like apple tv doesn't do enough with like promoting their stuff because this show got like a second series and Mm-hmm. um or a second season and mm-hmm. i don't think a lot of people like watch it and i just wish people would watch it because it's funny and it's like i get it, it it's about rich people but it's just mm-hmm. you know in a funnier light yeah yeah no apple like, tv fun like, and stuff like that so see like i've never even heard of that show i had to look it up <laughs> or, you know but here's the thing because it, when you said apple tv i was like oh that's why because yeah, Apple TV. I just heard a joke on uh, last week tonight where the shows <laughs> go to hide. Like no, like yes. it's great shows and great TV, uh, like great even movies. But it, it, really it seems is. like they don't really have that many subscribers. So there's only like specific group of people who talk about them, and then right. there's a much bigger bubble of Netflix, Amazon Prime, you know, like Hulu or whatever, right? And yeah. I just wish, and I feel like that's one of the problems with too many streaming services. It, I it really just is. wish, like, in because imagine something like this or like Ted Lasso or something on Netflix, right? Yes, it would have five times the audience. Like, it really would. It just, would. That's insane. Like, you know, like I've never again. I've never even heard of that show. Like, I heard of like on Apple. I've heard of like Silo, mm-hmm. supposed to be great. I obviously Ted Lasso is supposed to be awesome. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched it because I I don't have an Apple subscription. I'm sorry, Apple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard like you know shrinking supposed to be great like all those shows right and mm-hmm. I'm like yeah I'll get to it at some point but right it'd be great if it was involved you know included someplace I already pay for and I don't exactly. have to subscribe to and... another service like <laughs> and it sucks because it's like I think I'm subscribed to like 
every single streaming service that you could probably think of. Yeah. And it's and it's crazy because like I didn't even know that Apple TV had is streaming Napoleon. Like I didn't even have a clue that they were streaming Napoleon until I was on there then like the other night and it was like the first thing I saw and I was like, is it for rent? Or her, I can watch it. And no, they have the stream. They have the director's cut now as, as well, right? They, because Again, they the yeah. cinema there was a in the cinema there was like two and a half hours, and then uh, Ridley Scott mm-hmm. was like, yeah, there's gonna be like four hour director's cut like going to Apple TV because they produced it. Like that's right. their the two big movies, uh, Killers of the Flower yeah. Moon, and yeah. Napoleon. But obviously Napoleon kind of failed when it comes to Oscar yeah. baiting stuff. Killers yeah. of the Flower Moon did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, you know, Apple wants Apple wants them Oscars. So you know, like they yeah. invested a lot, a lot of money into it. <laughs> just, I just, I just wish they would promote their stuff more. The because it's like I see stuff for like Netflix and like Paramount and like Peacock and yeah, Hulu and it's like and and Disney of course, but mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. it's like Apple TV. It's like they're not like really pushing it. Like the same thing with like the show Masters of the Air, which I'm watching, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's like Austin Butler, and I'm like, that's Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg produced, and I'm like. But you guys are not really pushing the show out there mm-hmm. for people to watch, mm-hmm. and so that's why I just think it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's weird to me, like how they do like their like their promotion stuff because it's like Apple TV is like really not doing any. I'm like even Prime Video is doing a better job than them. Like yes, <laughs> it's like I just wish Apple TV would like pick it up because there's like some good shows on there and people don't even know. I honestly like I know this is a bad thing. <laughs> And I know this is going to be a problem, but I honestly wish there would be like one or two massive streaming services that would have everything. And it would be just, mm-hmm. obviously, we don't want just one big company to rule them all because Amazon, <clears throat> that's bad. Like, you know, mm-hmm. there are problems. There are, you know, there are problems with that thinking and with that line of, you know, doing things. Mm-hmm. However, for streaming, like, I, uh, like for now, like, <laughs> let's not, like, let, let's cut down the fat and let's like, you know, put up the actual, but without actually axing the stuff that already exists. You know, sell yes. it to somebody, sell it to Netflix, sell it to Amazon, sell it to somebody. Right. Like Apple, Apple, like the first trillion dollar company ever after and then it's, it's like Amazon was second, I believe. You know, you don't need the money. Like, yeah, you right. Do not, you do not need the money. <laughs> right. Just sell it. Like, just fucking, no, nah, just pisses me off. No, anyway, yeah. I could, I could, I could talk about this for another hour. So, no, let's not do that. Right. But, <laughs> This has been great. Like I've been asking you a lot yes. of questions and you've been patient enough and kind enough with your time. I really appreciate it. So for, you know, of before course. we end, let's flip the yes. tables. Is there any question or two you have for me? Okay. So I, I because I know you're a movie lover like me mm-hmm. and um, I just want to know, like, do you like, because you talked about your top five, what mm-hmm. are your top five favorite movies? Top five. All right. So number one has been for the mm-hmm. longest time lost in translation. That's, I know that's not a usual pick. I know it's, and for many people, it's going to be like, that, really? Uh, It's okay. (laughs) And I'm fine with it. It's it's a vibe. It's a, to me, it's a vibe movie. You ought to get it or not. I'm like, if you, yeah, I'm like, if you love it, if you, hey, you love it. It's a good choice though. I still haven't seen it. I've Mm -hmm. seen seen bits and pieces, but I'm like, one of these days I will have to sit down and like, it's a jest. It's a movie that made ScarJo into ScarJo we know. Scarlett Johnson. Okay. And yeah. it's a movie that shows you, like, she's still, like, the, for me, I'm a man, all right? So when you give oh, me yeah. Scarlett Johansson, <laughs> I just be like, she pretty, she very pretty. But also, that, that's a it. movie where she's, like, not mm-hmm. a sex bomb Scarlett Johansson we know from 2005 to, like, Avengers, right? She right. is a girl next door, Scarlett Johansson. She's still, like, extremely just, what? Mm-hmm. No, but she's, st- and, and she <laughs> rules that movie. And I think today, like, she's yeah. I'm kind of overlooked for that movie. I, like I'm not saying she need, needed to be like Oscar nominated, but maybe mm-hmm. like eh. no. So that would yeah. be my first one. My second okay. one, Shawshank Redemption, because you don't get any better than that. Like one of the most that uplifting movies one. about hope and about human, you know, resilience about human spirit about you know the nature of how tough it is to break a human spirit. It's awesome. It's just you know one of those transcendent mm-hmm. movies for me. Yeah. Number three probably would be like Airplane, which is a <laughs> one of the funniest movies. Still holds up. Yes. I introduced it to my girlfriend when we started to date, and I was like, "Oh, she's probably gonna think it's lame because you know it's very specific odd kind of humor." 
<laughs> it's so it's that's you know but no yeah. she she loves it she actually loves Speaking it of, <laughs> when you said airplane i literally just went back to like my favorite scene with the little girl when she's like i take my coffee black and strong like my man <laughs> yeah like the, the, the pause is what makes it i take it black yes. just like my man <laughs> <laughs> and the like, toe, oh my God. <laughs> like a ten-year-old girl, in like yes, a pretty like, dressed what? up, like in pretty dresses, right? Like it's like yes. light, like my man. And then the little guy, <laughs> the little kid is like, <laughs> the that, like, face. like what? <laughs> <laughs> and the two got two black dudes like speaking jive, and you know, the, and the, the, the old yes. lady, the stewardess, I speak jive, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, what? No, <laughs> it's it's so a comedy great. classic. It's yes. a com- and because of this movie, mm-hmm. like I didn't even know, but Leslie Nielsen had his whole entire dramatic career. He was a dramatic actor until this movie. He was a proper right. like theater dramatic actor mm-hmm. who had never, I don't think he's ever done comedy until this movie. And ever since then, really? our generation knows him from parodies, from comedies. Yes. So talk Lu- about how this um, one movie. Have done? Yeah. Yeah. And talk about like you know one movie like not only kind of giving his career like second life but the redefining the rest of his career like you know that's just, yeah uh, like like when I was when I learned that like he, the like the dude was in the movies from fifties and he was mostly yeah. dramatic movies I'm like oh so he was never like the funny guy he was a dramatic guy that's yeah, that's, that's crazy. It. yeah I know right and he's like don't don't you call me you know we need to get into the hospital. Hospital? What is it? A yeah. uh, big building with patients, <laughs> but it's not important right now. And just that delivery. <laughs> also, what helps, you know, like he kind of is like Sean Connery, like, you know, he aged. Yes. And then he stopped aging for like another 40, 30 years. Yes. <laughs> like he looked the same for I don't know how long. <laughs> yes. So that would be my, like, that's, and it was the only movie to this date where I genuinely, like, laughed so hard. I, like, l- rolled on the floor. Like, like literally, I was rolling on the floor laughing mm-hmm. during the scene where it was like, you need to come down, you need to come down. And they, like, you know, and there was a, there was a queue of people and, and everybody was trying to calm her down and, like, more violent way. There was a man with a baseball bat with a crowbar with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> and that that scene like floored literally floored me when i seen it for the first time and i was like 12 13 like my mom mm-hmm. still remembers me rolling on the floor to that scene yeah. and my number and I, four yeah honey mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, no, no yeah. I was like, and like my other line, like in that mm-hmm. movie too, when he was like, when they were like, see, uh, like Shirley is like, surely you can't be serious. And he's like, I am serious. And he's like, don't, don't call, call me Shirley. Shirley. Yes. <laughs> That's such a great, again, class. This is a comedic classic. It, you it know, is, and it's just definitely. so many, so many lines. And my number four, I've just recently mm-hmm. rewatched it in a glorious 4K restoration. And it's a mindfuck of a movie. But my kind of mindfuck, Mulholland Drive mm-hmm. by David Lynch. I don't know I've if you've always, seen it. Always, I've always, always, always heard about this movie. And it's like, I never like got, I never had a chance to like watch it. Girl, and it's okay. Like... <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. Okay. Let me tell you something. Okay. So first time I've yes. seen it again, I was like, I was going, getting into my, me being a cinephile. So I was like 14, 15. So yeah. too young, a bit too young to watch this, but I watched it mm-hmm. and I, even then, I was like, I don't understand this movie, but I fucking love it. I, I love the vibe of this movie. And then ever since then, right. I watched it. Now, this was my fifth time. I think I'm now 90% there about what's happening in that movie. <laughs> because <laughs> without spoilers, there's a movie mm-hmm. happening. For it's like two. Uh, the movie is like two hours, 20 minutes, I want to say, something like that. And for mm-hmm. the first like half, uh, like, you know, hour and a half, you're like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, a bit of mystery. I like it. Oh, all right. I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. Something happens. And you're like, okay. Wait, what? What the, wait, what, what the fuck just happened? Wait, <laughs> what? And I, I cannot tell you what happened and what, mm-hmm. or what, because that's, eh. but no, like it's, it's a movie like uh, mm-hmm. you need to go back to and try to comprehend what it might be about. Right. It's one of those that's, if the journey for you is not worth it, you will hate it. But if the vibe okay. <laughs> will hit with you, you will mm-hmm. love it. Like many people, like I, like I've, I mean, uh, I spoke to Robert right. recently, and he even said, like, I've rewatched it, and I actually appreciate it much more. And I was like, yes, my dude, yes. No, so Mulholland Drive, and this is how I fell in love with Naomi Watts. Like this is the okay. movie 
when you see her, she starts as the like, ditzy blonde who comes to, you know, be an, to Hollywood, be an actress. And she's like this ditzy, nice blonde, bubbly blonde. And there's an audit, and this is not a spoiler, there's an audition scene for like some sort of role. Right. And how she turns it in that scene, suddenly from mm -hmm. this like, you know, like a naive, a bubbly blonde to this like, actress, I was like, who is Naomi Watts? What? Who <laughs> the fuck? And then I right. watched 21 Grams and I watched the other, her other movies and I was like, yeah, of course, Naomi Watts. Now we know. But that's right. the movie that made me like her big fan. And also one of the movies, only one Oscar nomination and weirdly the best director, mm -hmm. David Lynch. Not a movie, right. nothing else. David Lynch. Because And I think he's a good I think he's a good director too as well. Again, you need to be on his vibe. Mm -hmm. You need to be like not not all of his movies hit with me. Like right. they're centered like some of them are out there. But mm -hmm. no, he this dude is just in a world of his own. There's a Netflix on Netflix short uh, he directed a couple of years for Netflix called What Did Jack Do? It's a 10 minute okay. movie about Talking Monkey and David Lynch. Okay. And you need to understand the point of the movie that, a jig, that Jack, which is the monkey, only thing he actually did was fall in love because it's okay. so fucking bizarre. They, they talk in riddles almost. And I'm like, what is the and then you need to under and then when you understand you step back and you understand, oh, this is his only crime. He fell in love. And I think it was right. like with with this llama or apaca or somebody something like that. It's again, David Lynch. <laughs> he is on he's operating on like a we are all here and he mm -hmm. is like up here. Like I don't know if he lives in the past and present and the future in the in the same time or if he has a yeah. access to some different drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. No, but I I love him. And yeah, and my number five probably Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge, honestly. Of course. No, it's. I love that. It's. Yeah, it's just again like you know I know there are quite unusual choices, but like hey, this is kind of who I am. I'm an unusual guy. <laughs> right. Is there any anything else? Um. Oh. Um. I always because it's like movie wise, mm -hmm. I is another one. Um. Is if you had a chance, if mm -hmm. you were like to say, like if you were a director, if you had a chance to do like a movie that you like, which one would it have been? Like to direct? Yes. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. That's a <laughs> that's a big. I see. Director <laughs> would be my my dream job, to be honest. Like because okay, like director would be because they are troubleshooting people. They are people yeah. who, you know, like I, I I'm one of them. I'm I'm nerd, mm -hmm. okay. I'm a nerd. Mm -hmm. So I listen to DGA's <laughs> podcast. You know, Directors Guild of War. They have a podcast. So they I listen to directors mm -hmm. talk to each other about movies and pretend like I understand everything they say. But no, I don't. However, they always say mm -hmm. that you know, director is mainly the guy who needs to answer ten thousand questions a day and needs to be the one who's like, okay, this has failed, or we cannot do this short like this. We need to figure out a right. way how to do it differently. So they are master. The great ones are masters of troubleshooting. Realist realistically, mm -hmm. it's not about this is a great performance. No, it's more about how hey, we cannot really do this short because of weather, or we can do this because right. the, the actor is sick. So we need to shoot around it. And it's like you know, and what would I direct? I don't even know. Like <laughs> I, I feel like it would be something probably kind of in a style of like David Lynch or Yorgos Latimos, like where it wouldn't be normal quote unquote movie right. <laughs> it would be something <laughs> yeah. out there something wild because for me yeah. i would much rather for me if if, if you make a movie mm -hmm. right and right. it's the most average movie i'll see to me that's the most like i guess sinful that's the way you have to put it i don't know <laughs> that's the most sinful <laughs> because i would rather hate the movie than or love the movie than just be like that's a movie and i will forget right. about it in a week's time but whereas, like, even if I don't like the movie, at least evokes an emotion and make, it makes me make yeah. me think, why do I don't like it? Why did it not click with me? Is it me? Is it a movie? Is it a choice that yeah. I made? And I'm always like, yeah, what, you know, and I, like, that's why I love to talk about mm -hmm. like great movies. What clicks for you? What clicks for me? What clicks for this person? What clicks exactly. for this person? Exactly. Because it's yeah. fascinating to see how you have movies, like, you know, your favorite movie is this one. My favorite movie is this one. And it might click, you know, it might be just, you know, because you it clicked with you on several different layers. I might never understand because I've never, I've never mm -hmm. been in your shoes. I never, you know, I never right. lived in your life, which, and right. you've never been in mine. So like, it's kind of like, you know, this different perspective. So I, for me, I, I don't have a, like, you know, 
dream project. Like I don't have a like you know I'm I'm not like Shane, <laughs> our friend Shane Conto, who's like I have a script yes ready. If Hollywood is on, I he actually has a script ready. I'm like, how I love the fuck that do you have how the fuck do you have time to do that? But okay, <laughs> on top of everything else you do, like right. But no, like I don't have a dream script. But I in my not other life, I I would love to be a director just for that. You know, to try it and just to make something real that would stay yeah. maybe after I'm gone. Oh, so I love that. Yeah, I'm I'm like I'm that. sorry that's, I don't that's have a solid question. I like it. I like that. I like that solid answer. That was a good one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, of course. No, this honestly okay, okay. Sh Chantal, this has I... been a blast. Mm -hmm. Like I'll let you yes. go. It's been a long recording. I'll I can talk to you for yes. an hour or two, but I, I me don't too, wanna I'm having like I'm having so much fun. <laughs> no, me too. Like but, but I have a, you know, I don't wanna take the rest of your day. Yeah. I I get it. Yours too. I mean, most definitely. Well, it's almost nine PM here. So look, I'm you know, oh, I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna say say uh, you know, goodbye. Uh, no goodbye. I'm gonna say hi to my girlfriend and to my cat. And <laughs> just gonna be nice. And we might watch Abbott Elementary. So just you know. Oh yes. Dude, it, perfect way to end the night. <laughs> it's a great fucking show and people need yes. to watch it and it's been renewed for yes. season four happy. i'm so happy yeah me too me too that's a <laughs> great show i need to have Yay. at least five more seasons as long as they have as long as they want to write it as long as quinta wants to write it let yes. her do it just no. i'm I'm here for it i'm just here for it same both of us <laughs> michael and i both same mm -hmm. uh however if people want to you know after listening to this or hopefully before like you know where would they catch you where would they where could they follow you you guys can follow me on x or twitter um at underscore akira xo or mm -hmm. if you just want to check out my letterbox and check out my reviews and see what i have to say about some movies you can catch me there and i am under edna mode yes edna mode from the incredibles <laughs> nice callback and yeah it's an excellent <laughs> excellent username letterbox like jealous like that's a a and one a funny yes a funny story about that too someone literally like messaged me too it's like hey can i have your name and i was like huh, no i would see i would be like <laughs> how much how much are you talking <laughs> right <laughs> you know so i was like oh no <laughs> ten thousand ten thousand yeah, like, like, if you put a price on it like let's go <laughs> No, I'll, obviously those links will be in the description. I strongly recommend for you to follow, you know, Chantal on all the places because she is worth following. And if you want to follow me, it's in movies lost on Letterboxd, lostinmovies.co.uk, which is my blog where I write twice a week. And of course, this podcast every other Friday, which is part of the SPDM Crew Podcast Media. Also, big shout out to High Flyer Creative for designing my logo. To see what else they have happening, visit highflyercreative.com. This is the end, so until next time, bye-bye.